Friends, the issue of human trafficking is a matter of the highest urgency. Kamakailan lamang nabalitaan natin ang issue ng mga kababayan natin sa Syria. Niloko ng illegal recruiter, pinangakuan na magtatrabaho sa Dubai, yun pala ay magiging alipin sa bansang Syria. We've also learned, based on the succession of hearings on Senate Resolution 131, also being heard by this committee, that human trafficking is an entire ecosystem. Pakimute lang po lahat ng ibang audio natin, mga kasama. That human trafficking is an entire ecosystem. It involves various actors along the supply chain, from the recruitment of victims, usually women and children, to the provision of their unimpeded passage through inter-country borders, to the arrangements made at their point of destination. May pastillas na nagpapadulas. And uh, my colleague, Senator Aimi, knows this well because he's been one of the most uh, faithful participants in that ongoing hearing. And I'd like to thank and uh, acknowledge Senator Aimi for her presence as well uh, in this morning's hearing, Senator Aimi. At siguro, mga kaibigan, ay nabalitaan na natin ang pagtaas ng mga kaso ng online sexual abuse and exploitation of children nitong pandemya. Bunsod ng mas matinding kahirapan na dala ng COVID-19 economic recession sa mga bansang katulad ng Pilipinas. At siguro mas madaming panahon sa loob ng kanilang mga tahanan sa mga bansang pinanggagalingan ng mga tagapagtangkilik ng child sexual exploitation materials. Nagkaroon ng uptick o pagtaas ng mga kaso ng online sexual exploitation. Friends, just for our information, this measure has been certified as a LEDAC priority measure and has been identified by the PLLO as one of the priority measures of the executive. We're going to be hearing primarily two bills today, the bill on expanding the Anti-Trafficking Act and the bill on online sexual exploitation of children. By way of clarity, the bills on electronic violence against women will be touched upon only insofar as they relate to the trafficking and OSAIC bills, in that the latter also emphasizes electronic or internet-based means of committing violence of the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act. I'd also like to manifest that there will be a technical working group tomorrow at the same time, during which I hope We'll come to an agreement on the question of whether we can merge the two bills into one or file both bills as separate measures. The TWG will also be the opportunity to discuss the finer legal points related to both measures, particularly the provisions on investigation and prosecution. For now, I'd like to hear the positions of the various government agencies uh, perhaps we can just go around the table, and after that, we can hear from the civil society organizations. You may choose to comment on either one of the measures, the Anti-Trafficking on Persons Bill, or the Online Sexual Exploitation and Abuse of Children Bill, or both. So at this point, I'd like to ask the committee secretary to please introduce the resource persons. Good morning, everyone. The committee would like to acknowledge the following resource person. From the Department of Justice, we have Attorney Mary Grace Cantana, Attorney Carla Netura. From the Department of Justice also, Attorney Angerine Medina. From uh, the Anti-Human Trafficking Division of the NBI, we have Attorney Janet Francisco. From the National Telecommunications Commission, we have Attorney Ella Lopez and Engineer Imelda Nashen. Uh, from the uh, DSWD, we have Ms. Maricel De Luria. From uh, the Department of Labor and Employment, we have Ms. Evelyn Manahan. From uh, the women's group, we have from uh, the Coalition Against Trafficking in, uh, in Women, Asia Pacific. Uh, we, uh, we have a representative, Attorney Christina Sevilla. From the Philippines Legislator Committee on Population and Development Foundation, Inc., we have Mr. Romeo Donguito. 
Then uh, again from that uh, uh, coalition, we have uh, Miss Ninita Dalbe. Then from the IJM, Philippine Prosecution Development Director, we have Attorney Lawrence Aritao. Then uh, from the Plan International Philippines, we have Miss Alexander Pura and Shigine Morasmatsu. Then from uh, the Women's Legal and Human Rights Bureau, we have Miss Jeline Paclarin uh, with Elizabeth uh, Collian. Then from the Democratic Socialist Women of the Philippines, we have Miss Elizabeth Angshoko. From uh, the Smart Communication, we have a PLDT, Ms. Uh, Attorney Eileen Radio. Then Department Head of and Vice President Legal and Regulatory Group, uh, SMART, Attorney Roy Ibai. Then from the Psychological Association of the Philippines, we have uh, Ms. Beatriz Torre. Then uh, from the Coalition of Concerned Families of the Philippines, we have several uh, representatives, Mr. Ariel Gomez, Ms. L. Archeri Patino, Ms. Maria Edith uh, Desabel, Pastor Pips Co., Mr. P. U. Arce, Susan Garbasho, Hazel Apino. From the Kapunan and Castillo Law Offices, we have Attorney Lorna Kapunan. Then from the UN, uh, from the National, Proje uh, National Project Office UN Women, Ms. Cherise Jordan, and from Ms. Jonna Ang. And then from the United Nations Children's Fund, we have Attorney Marie Michelle Munoz Quezon. From the Government Affairs and Policy uh, of Google, we have Attorney uh, Eves Gonzalez. That's all, Mr. Ch uh, Mrs. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Comsec. Uh, resource persons, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Uh, pwede niyo pong ibigay yung inyong position sa bill or mga bills uh, in the order in which uh, you were acknowledged by the Comsec. So first, I'd like to call uh, the Department of Justice. Uh, I believe at it was Attorney uh, Cantana, ma'am. And then uh, followed by uh, the National Bureau of Investigation, uh, Attorney Francisco. So, uh, Attorney Cantana, you have the floor. Yes, um, thank you. I'm so Mother sorry, Mother. Attorney Quintana. I, I correct myself. <laughs> thank you, Madam Chairperson. Uh, uh, yes, good morning po. Uh, good morning to the members of the committee and also to uh, all the attendees in this um, meeting today. Um, perhaps, Madam Chairperson, uh, we can provide a comment to, on um, the uh, bills on the amendment to 9208 as chair of the uh, IACAT. While um, we have not uh, provided, um, we have not given the committee um, uh, an official um, comment on our bills, but um, we were previously asked by the Presidential Legislative Liaison Office to provide comments on the on the bills um, which are subject today. So, Comsec, na wala po yung signal ni. Okay, there, attorney, you're back online. Sige po, please proceed. Yes, Madam Chair, if I can just read the comments we provided to the PLLO and then if the committee wishes, we can uh, transmit an official um, um, copy to the to the committee. Uh, Please do both, Attorney. Yes, ma'am. And before you proceed, I'd just like to acknowledge the presence and uh, thank him for it, uh, attorney, uh, attorney. Senator Sherwin, thank you for joining the hearing, uh, Senator Sherwin. Yes, Attorney Quintana, please proceed. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairperson. Uh, first off, uh, the proposed amendments seek to, um, seek to, among others, strengthen Republic Act No. 9208, as amended by enhancing the capability of law enforcement agencies to detect, investigate, and prosecute cases of trafficking in persons by setting the standards and guidelines of the surveillance, interception, and recording of communications of suspected traffickers under the supervision of the courts, let it be emphasized the responsibilities of internet service providers and tourism-related establishments in facilitating investigations and reporting acts of PIP, and C, expand the membership of the Interagency Council Against Trafficking to complement existing members in the effective implementation of that. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for that, Madam Chairperson. These amendments no, are timely. <laughs> These amendments are timely as our laws must keep up with the advancement in technology. 
easy access to and technical aspects of the internet, internet make our children and women vulnerable and susceptible to TIP and present a major challenge in investigating TIP when committed online. Accordingly, this dep department supports the proposed amendments to the Anti-Trafficking Persons Act to address identified gaps in the investigation and prosecution of TIP cases and the institutionalization of existing policies and programs for the protection of our women and children against TIP. Uh, these are our specific comments on the following uh, um, Senate bills. Uh, on Senate Bill number 1220-1754 and 1794, on the exception to RA number 4200 or the anti tapping law. Under the above-mentioned Senate bills, law enforcement officers, upon a written order from the court, shall be allowed to track, intercept, and record any communication, conversation, discussions, data information, or messages, whether spoken or written of a person charged with, charged with or suspected of TIP. The proposed amendment is seen to address the challenges being faced by law enforcers in the investigation and prosecution of TIP cases, especially those committed through the use of the internet. This will only be allowed in cases involving child trafficking, child pornography, or sexual exploitation of children. The exemption of these particular cases from the provisions of RA, 9, RA number 4200 will make for a more effective, efficient, and proactive surveillance and case buildup of TIP cases, take, taking into account its clandestine operation, which in some instances even involve family members or relatives as the perpetrators. Likewise, there exists a cloak of anonymity and impunity in the commission of these acts, since they are done at the privacy of their own homes, significantly crippling the actions of the law enforcers that may lead to compromised cases. It should be stressed that since this method will entail intrusion into the private communications of an individual, in possible violation of a person's constitutionally guaranteed right to privacy, the proposed amendment rightfully include stringent requirements and measures to be followed by law enforcement officers in the application for judicial authorization, execution of the same, and the proper custody of such recorded communication and disposal of the intercepted information. On the role of the private sector, the proposed bills recognize the critical role of the private sector in the prevention and investigation of cases involving child trafficking, underscoring the concept of shared responsibility between the government and private entities in fighting the evils of TIP. The proposed bills impose an obligation of internet service providers and tourism-oriented establishment to immediately notify law enforcement agencies should they obtain facts and circumstances that any form of child trafficking, child pornography, or any form of sexual exploitation of children is being committed using its facilities or within its premises. Uh, I just received the directive from uh, our uh, under secretary in charge, and she has instructed me to include also, uh, if the committee wishes to include also the um, money service um, establishments, and um, we can provide a, um, a draft language for that, but uh, we have seen a copy from one of the bills that are uh, subject of this um, committee hearing today, Madam mm -hmm. Chair. Indeed, but Attorney, but please also do provide us that uh, draft yes, but... formulation if you have it already. Before you proceed, uh, Attorney Quintana, I'd just like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Kiko. Thank you for joining the hearing today. Please proceed, Attorney Quintana. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Uh, by the nature of their business, ISP and tourism-oriented establishments such as hotels, resorts, inns, motels, and other related facilities may come into contact at the first instance with a suspected trafficking situation. The passage of these amendments will require that they be vigilant in notifying law enforcement agencies like the PNP and the NBI of the possible commission of child trafficking. On the expansion of the membership of the IACA, the department likewise supports expanding the membership of the IACA to implement the existing council members in include members including the following government officers as uh, mentioned as stated in the uh, uh, Senate bills, the Secretary of the DICT, the Secretary of the OTR, the Secretary of the OH, the Admis um, Administrator of the OWA, Director of the NBI, which although they're very um, active in all our uh, TIP uh, operations, is not a member, but uh, our ex-official member, but because of the uh, DOJ as their attached agency. 
We likewise recommend the inclusion of the Secretary of the Department of Tourism since they are responsible for accrediting tourism-oriented businesses. It is within their mandate to formulate and promulgate rules and regulations governing, governing the operation and activities of all tourism enterprises, including the licensing, accreditation, and classification of tourism enterprises, imposing a re reasonable penalties for violation of accreditation policies. We note that the proposed additional members already coordinate with the IACAT in the implementation of the anti-trafficking in persons law and other policy measures of the government against trafficking in persons. On plea bargaining, the department notes that SBN 1754 and 1794 both contain provisions on plea bargaining. However, the same provision is not present in SBN 1220. We concur with the proposed inclusion of a provision on plea bargaining so that prosecutors can employ a method to guarantee the successful prosecution of PIP cases. Plea bargaining has been permitted by the 2000 Revised Rules of Criminal Procedure and the Revised Guidelines for Continuous Trial. Moreover, the state benefits from successful bar plea bargaining agreements since it will allow for a sustainable and timely prosecution and adjudication of human trafficking cases. We wish to bring to your attention the Department's Advisory Opinion Number 001, Series of 2019, which provides guidance to the prosecutors in the appropriate use of plea bargaining involving TIP cases, while at the same time honoring the rights of the victim, the accused, and the interest of the state. On institutionalizing TSWD's recovery and reintegration program for TIP victims, the bills incorporate the recovery and reintegration program of the Department of Social Welfare and Development for trafficked persons in the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act, thus institutionalizing the same. The recovery and reintegration aspect of TIP is one of the most important phases of TIP as it delivers a complete package of services to victims, victim survivors of TIP, which enhances the psychosocial, social, and economic needs of victim survivors. The beneficiaries of these services are not limited to the victim survi survivors, but also include their families and relatives and the communities. Uh, now, Madam Chair, um, our comment on SBN 1929, on Section 3, particularly on Section 3, Paragraph I, defining child pornography, we wish to restate our comment made with the we we previously made a comment also on the House of Representatives uh, Committee on Revision of Laws um, on child pornography to replace the term child pornography with the more accurate term of child sexual abuse or exploitation, and we can provide the language for that, Madam Chair. Thank you, Attorney. Uh, yes, and on Section 6 on Qualified Trafficking in Persons, we concur with the proposed additional qualifying circumstances in view of the perpetrators increasing depravity as they take advantage of the increased vulnerabilities brought about by or as a consequence of such act. On Section 8, uh, Prosecution and Investigation of Cases, we suggest uh, just changing subparagraphs, uh, interposing subparagraphs B and A because of the logical order of the uh, investigation of um, the IP cases, Madam Chair. And then on the plea bargaining, uh, where the offended parties are minors, the qualification that plea bargaining must be dealt with utmost prudence and may only be done with it when it is in the best interest of the child is consistent with the DOJ Yakat Advisory Opinion Number 001, which I mentioned earlier, uh, which provides the best interest of the child victim shall be given paramount consideration. As provided in the advisory opinion, plea bargaining can spare children from testifying in court and can benefit the child through its prompt service of justice. Subsequent to the provision on plea bargaining in its subparagraph, D was skipped. Uh, I think the, uh, it, it skipped from C to E, Madam Chair. So That's all right. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll clean it up as we go along. Um, <laughs> could you begin to wrap up the presentation of the department, Attorney? Yes. Um, Thank you. Uh, it's basically, Madam Chair, uh, the same as our comments in the first three bills. Uh, and we will we'll provide the official, I uh, will transmit the official uh, position of the DOJ to the uh, committee for uh, its consideration, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Salamat din po, uh, Attorney Quintana, and uh, I hope that 
the department will continue to be active until the technical working group also uh, tomorrow. Noting also your points about the uh, exemptions to the anti-wiretapping law, plea bargaining, uh, some of the fine legal points that I hope can be in those provisions on investigation and prosecution uh, that I hope can be discussed uh, and also finalized uh, tomorrow. So marami salamat, uh, Attorney Quintana. Yes, before I call the next resource person, Attorney uh, Senator Aimee, yes. Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I had uh, a matter of housekeeping. Because I was not aware this uh, bill uh, would come to four, I have a similar bill amending um, our a. Uh, 9775 or the uh, anti-pornography and online sexual abuse. And this was Senate Bill 1854. I'm not certain if this was referred to our committee, but given that it's square on the same topic, I think perhaps uh, we should ask for a referral. Uh, I note that the science and technology is also a uh, Oh, uh, committee chair in this hearing. And uh, I would just like to um, add, in addition to the points of law uh, brought about by DOJ and uh, the other resource persons, that in that bill, in SBN 1854, I indicated a, uh, re a requirement for ISPs to become responsible because they clearly have the tools and the technology to do something about this, and yet they've been very remiss in this effort. So, unang una, tinaasan ko yung penalties and sanctions to include imprisonment and possible uh, uh, joint and solidary liability for these huge telco companies. Kung uh, ano man, at least panakot. At uh, ikalawa, yung requirement sa NTC na mag-submit kung ano-ano yung mga technology, program, software, at iba pang modes na in-include in nila para makikil itong online sexual abuse. Kasi hanggang ano, ngayon, di pa natin naririnig kung talagang ginampana ng NTC yung uh, papel na inatasa ng batas sa kanila. So, uh, that was my contribution and perhaps uh, Madam Chair can do something about the referral given that hearings have already, that this hearing has already been conducted on the same subject. Salamat po. Salamat din, Senator Aimee. Yes, a check of my policy shows that Senate Bill 1854 was referred also to our committee. So we will include it uh, in the technical working group tomorrow. And uh, please feel free to continue uh, bringing up the points of 1854 in addition to those relating to the Internet Service Providers and the National Telecommunications Commission uh, as this uh, hearing continues. Uh, thank you, Senator Aimee. So now I'll call on the next uh, resource person. I'd like to request our resource persons to uh, take about five minutes each per presentation and just one person per organization or institution, please. So could we hear next from the National Bureau of Investigation? I believe it was Attorney Francisco. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, and good morning, good morning. to all the participants of today's uh, hearing. Uh, with the permission from the Honorable Chair, we would like to submit our official comments on the proposed uh, bill subject of this meeting as soon as we receive a proper authorization from, from the concerned the Department of the, the Bureau. And, uh, and all right. Uh, yes, Attorney. Yes, ma'am. And also for the information of the Honorable Body, we have submitted uh, several comments on the um, somehow related laws to the uh, proposed legislation subject matter of this hearing to various uh, uh, committee uh, from the Congress as well as the, the uh, technical working groups created by the Department of Justice uh, in relation to, to uh, the laws uh, amending the Anti-Child Pornography Act, as well as the Anti-Human Trafficking Law, Madam Chair. Thank you, Attorney. Do you think uh, that you will have the authorization from the Bureau by tomorrow para pwede pong isama sa technical working group natin? Uh, I, I will try my best, Madam Chair, uh, but I would uh, be actively participating in uh, tomorrow's uh, technical working group, Madam Chair. 
Great. Thank, Thank you so you much for much. that, Attorney Francisco. We're really hoping to file either these uh, two bills uh, combined into one or both separately in time for uh, March 8th, International Women's Day. So thank you so much for your uh, participation. At thank you very much, ma'am. Thank Salamat you. Po. Po. All right. So now let's hear from the National Telecommunications Commission, uh, Attorney Lopez. Or if not, Attorney Lopez, will it be Engineer Washian? Comsec, sino yung magiging resource person natin uh, sa NTC? Ah, good, morning, there, uh, good, good morning, morning, Madam Chair. And yes, good morning po to all. Uh, if, uh, with the kind indulgence of uh, the, the Honorable Chair, if we be given... Uh, appropriate time at the end of the presentation. We are trying to uh, collate our presentation for today, po, ma'am. Certainly. Uh, balikan ko na lang po kayo, Engineer Walshen. No problem po. Alright, so could we hear now from the DSWD, Assistant Bureau Director Deloria. Or kung in yes, ma'am. Okay, you have the floor, Paul. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for inviting me. Ma'am, medyo mababa yung audio nyo. Pwede nyong lakasan, please. Hello? Um, can you hear me na po? A bit more, pero mahina pa rin po at medyo choppy. Hello? Is this okay? There, that's better, ma'am. Okay, please proceed. Yeah, if I may share lang po, uh, madam, uh, I, I understand that uh, the department has uh, already um, submitted po, uh, position papers in support of the, the set bills. Um, so let me share. Are you trying to share screen, ma'am, so that I can okay. ask the ComSec to allow you? You're doing so already? Okay, thank you. Please proceed, ma'am. Nakikita na po namin yung screen nyo. Madam Chair, uh, I'm sharing po yung first slide on the support for the proposed bills. If, uh, if you can see it po. Okay. Uh, so, Madam Senator and uh, all the members po of the Senate uh, present in this uh, ito, uh, makita ko mato po sa inyo lahat. And happy Women's Month po. Okay. Happy Women's Month po. Uh, so, um, again po, Madam Chair, uh, I understand that the department has already submitted po. Uh, our uh, position papers in support of the proposed bills as we uh, understand and uh, we fully support because we um, understand that this further will further enhance the protection of women and children from all forms of exploitation, particularly violence perpetrated electronically or online. So um, we all know that uh, the number of uh, online sexual abuse and exploitation particularly among children have increased uh, dito po sa, during the pandemic. No? Uh, I will not go through the uh, details. Na po. If I may, na lang po, uh, Madam Chair, um, proceed po doon sa ating recommendations. Um, uh, as follows, uh, yes, please. Po, uh, we would like to recommend for the inclusion of certain provisions on the strengthening of the IACAP particularly the allocation of budget or line line that uh, that will allow member agencies to uh, strengthen the programs uh, along mitigation, prevention, and responses to what's happening in cases. Po, no? And uh, of course, uh, as earlier mentioned po, by the DOJ, um, the test of the community, the response is the victim, no? but uh, we look into the problem as 
the system, no? it's, it's a systemic problem. So we also provide services to the family. So um, we also propose for the inclusion of uh, provision uh, along the enhancement of family-based protection and response mechanisms. No? And may we also recommend for uh, Madam Chair for the uh, alignment of all programs no? uh, along the the integration of the Philippine Plan of Action for Environments Against Children, and of course, our National Response Plan on Design, and the NPAC. No? Um, if we may also recommend for the designation of the central authority in the government where um, ISPs and internet content hosts um, will be um, sort of uh, mandated no, to report CISA, OSAE, and other violence against uh, children cases. No? And um, of course, the roles and functions of the NECTEC uh, may also be uh, indicated in, in, in that particular provision. And um, if we may also uh, include the provision of the development of the structured training program for frontliners, including our uh, law, en law enforcers and uh, the prosecutors, along digital forensic and uh, um, Sorry. If we may also include uh, a particular provision on along um, that, will, that will regulate money transfer and other financial institutions and um, enforcing strict rules no, on requiring valid IDs when when individuals gain money with success so that we will be able to raise um, the customers and uh, eventually trace the, the perpetrators of Mosaic. And um, maybe also re recommend that uh, the, a particular provision that we also mandate the ISPs and internet content post data uh, along the retention of data on cases of Mosaic uh, and other cyber related cases for the children. Um, uh, it was also mentioned earlier, but uh, uh, and if I may also support of this, uh, the institutionalization of the DSW police recovery and the integration of non traffic persons. Um, we, we propose for the allocation of uh, funding for the services and interventions, um, as well as funding for personnel at the DSW and at the local government uh, unit. Level um, that is uh, in view of the um, impending implementation of the Mandana study. Um, last slide, Madam Chair, is uh, on the recommendation for the establishment of uh, halfway homes um, where uh, victim survivors may temporarily stay. Uh, say, for example, upon, upon rescue. Um, this halfway home space uh, serve the purpose of um, temporary shelter, you know, and uh, it, it may also allocate funding for upgrade of uh, existing temporary shelters. Um, lastly, Madam Chair, uh, we would like to recommend for the reactivation and the upgrading of the um, the previous Philippine anti-trafficking database. Uh, of course, it's already is uh, upgrading uh, because this is an anti-trafficking. Uh, we have based referral system, uh, uh, Madam Chair, and this will allow us to, to um, uh, have uh, an organized no, and uh, web based uh, system of cases, referral system of cases, and uh, this will facilitate for your uh, immediate response to uh, and uh, provision of interventions to the victims and, of course, the families and eventually the communities. For Happy Women's Month din po. I can't hear it enough and say it enough to fellow women. At uh, maraming salamat din po, uh, Assistant Bureau Director Deloria. So now let's hear from uh, the uh, Department of Labor and Employment. 
uh, from Ma'am Evelyn Manahan. Uh, and before you uh, proceed, um, Ms. Manahan, I just like to manifest that uh, Senate Bill 1854, amending Republic Act 9775, or the Anti-Child Pornography Act, filed by Senator Amy Marcos, is included in this hearing for the record. So thank you. And uh, so now uh, let's hear from uh, Ms. Manahan for Dole. Yeah, uh, it's Miss Manangan, Your Honor. Manangan. Oh, I, I, I apologize, Miss Manangan, yes, for Dole. Yeah. And before you proceed, Miss Manangan, I'd like to also acknowledge the presence in the hearing of uh, Senator Cynthia. Thank you, Senator, for uh, being here. So we, will, we will communicate with the staff of Senator Cynthia just to mute her audio. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Manangan, you have the floor. Yeah. Good morning, Chair. Uh, on behalf of Dole, please allow me to express our appreciation for drafting these bills which to intend to provide relevant protection to women and children, especially from illegal work, exploitation, and worst forms of child labor. Uh, unfortunately, the invitation has reached our office, especially the, particularly the Bureau of Workers with Special Concern, late yesterday afternoon. So for lack of material time, uh, uh, can you please allow me to submit our position paper as soon as we are able to get the official inputs from our Young Workers Development Division of the Bureau? At the, moment, at the moment, they're having their National Child Labor Committee meeting, so uh, I guess that's why uh, a representative from their division won't be able to attend. Certainly, uh, Ms. Manangan, I apologize for the lateness of the invitation, and the committee looks forward uh, to Dole's input, particularly from the relevant bureau. Makakadalo din po ba kayo sa TWG bukas? Uh, I will uh, relay it to our director, Madam, but I, I guess they will send a representative. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Manangan. I, the committee would appreciate that in participation of the director or representative ng Lucas. I think someone's audio is on. Pakimute lang po. Salamat. Pakimute lang. All right. So now uh, we'll hear from the Department of Education. Uh, attorney, present our attorney Hill Aquino, Mr. Christopher Valiente, and Ms. Dina Buhat. So could we please hear from attorney Aquino? Good morning, Madam Chair. I am attorney Hill Aquino from the Office of the Undersecretary for Legal Affairs. Um, unfortunately, ma'am, because uh, we received the, the invitation quite um, uh, late, no, but that's okay, ma'am, because uh, we actually sent our position paper and our comments on similar bills in the House of Representatives. So I believe that our comments there are a bit more general in nature and they also apply to the Senate bills that are currently present. So um, in deference to my colleagues from the Curriculum and Instruction strand, us from the Legal Affairs strand, we will review if such comments will be applicable here and submit our written comments if, if uh, found applicable, ma'am. Thank you, po, Madam Chair. Thank you, too, uh, Mr. Aquino, Attorney Aquino. And uh, will DepEd be able to participate in the TWG tomorrow? Uh, apologies, ma'am. No, I'll I'll have to verify, ma'am. But we'll try our best, ma'am. Because um, again, I only saw the the schedule now, so I could not commit. But we will try our best, ma'am, to send a representative. Thank you, pa, madam chair. All right. Thank you, also, uh, attorney Aquino. So now uh, we will go to the women's groups and hear from hear from the resource persons. Uh, first, from the Coalition Against Trafficking of Women, Asia and the Pacific, or CATWAP, uh, Attorney Sevilla. Or if not, Attorney Sevilla, Comsec, sinong resource person galing sa CATWAP? All right. If uh, if Attorney Sevilla just isn't at her desk right now, maybe we can come back to her. 
together with uh, the NTC in the next round. So let's hear from the Philippine Legislators Committee on Population and Development, PLCPD, from Executive Director Rom Dongueto. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Ang Child Rights Network at PLCPD ay taos puso pong nagpapasalamat sa ating mga senador at authors of bills that will address the serious and urgent problems of electronic gender-based violence, including online sexual abuse and exploitation of children. Posaic worsens in the time of COVID-19 pandemic. Thus, we believe this hearing is very timely and important as Congress pursues the development of a comprehensive legal framework that will protect children from sexual crimes committed online as well as offline sexual abuses facilitated or made possible by online engagements. As we have emphasized in several occasions, CRN fully believes that there are gaps in the current laws related to OSAEC, especially in the face of rapid advancement and innovation in information and communications technology. The predators are coping with equal speed in using technology to continue to victimize our children while our laws remain outdated. CRN is pleased to know that some of the recommendations raised by the Child Rights Network based on our legislative mapping that in 2019 were already reflected in the proposed measures, including to clearly define and take into account the technological nuances of OSAIC, and also provide legal definitions for essential terms, including streaming and live streaming. This includes delineating OSAIC as a transnational crime and an extraditable offense to ensure that the investigation and prosecution of OSAIC across borders. To strengthen the powers of government authorities to implement OSAIC related laws, to widen the scope of existing laws to ensure that private entities, including internet content hosts and internet service providers, are compelled to aid in prevention and investigation of OSAIC cases. This includes clearly delineating the obligations of social media networks, hotel or mall owners, operators, internet cafes, kiosks, or lessors of business establishments, banks, money remittance centers, and credit card companies in, relate on, in relation to shutting down OSAI. To provide mandatory services and programs specifically designed for victims of OSAI to facilitate the rehabilitation and reintegration back to society of victims, there must be a clear provisions to holistically ensure that government has appropriate measures to prevent, protect, and rehabilitate children from OSAI. Further, Madam Chair, we would like to mention that we are supportive of all the bills currently being deliberated in this committee, but in particular, we express our support to some of the provisions of SB 2068. We believe that the bill presents the up-to-date definitions paramount to the proper identification of OSAIC, including a clear distinction among internet service providers, internet content hosts, the social media companies. It also proposes the more acceptable and suitable term, child sexual abuse and exploitation material, and provides the basis on why child pornography is no longer accept acceptable as per the Luxembourg guidelines. The bill is also able to address the multidimensional and multi-sectoral aspects of OSAEC by stipulating the duties and obligations of the private sector. It also enumerates the punishable acts and proposes necessary penalties in such cases that they, are, uh, that, that they fail to oblige. It is worth noting that SBs 1632, 1923, and House Bill 5869 propose what should constitute the Interagency Council for OSAEC. But we support the proposal under SB 2068 to include DSWD, DOJOOC, DICT, CHR, PNP, NBI, AMLC, in consultation with ICT companies and CSOs. We, of course, support the inclusion of a section on the reasonable accommodation of CWDs or Child with Disabilities, IP, 
and other children with special concerns, the applicability of the Juvenile Justice Welfare Act, and the provision of concretely enumerated mandatory services to victims of OSAI. For the rest of our positions on the bills, Madam Chair, we are respectfully submitting our position paper to the Committee for Consideration. Lastly, we would like to thank the Committee for inviting CRN in the TWU meeting tomorrow. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair, and belated happy birthday. Salamat, Rom. Dumadami yung mga pagbati natin. Kung hindi uh, Women's Month, mga kaarawan natin, inihintay ko na lang may mag-belated uh, happy bagong Trends Day sa isa't isa. <laughs> Uh, friends, uh, Attorney Sevilla of Catwap uh, just has a problem with her internet, but she will submit Catwap's position paper if she still can't connect. And I hope, Attorney Sevilla, that uh, Catwap will also participate in our um, technical working group tomorrow. Salamat. And salamat muli, uh, uh, Executive Director Rom. So now uh, we'll hear from the International Justice Mission through Attorney Aritao. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Um, may I request permission to share my screen? So I do have Certainly. Okay, Comsec, paki enable yung IJM mag share screen. Okay, salamat. You go ahead, sir. Thank you. To the committee chair and its members and everyone present, good morning. My name is Lawrence Aritao. Director of Prosecution Development with International Justice Mission. Now, IJM is a global organization that in the Philippines works um, very in a very focused manner in combating online sexual exploitation of children. And we also serve as the child sector representative in the Interagency Council Against Trafficking. Now, I myself have been involved in child protection and counter trafficking uh, for the past 12 years. And uh, it's an honor to present our casework data as well as recommendations, especially those related to the pending bills. Now, the average survivor of online sexual exploitation of children must suffer for two years before he or she is rescued. Charito, a survivor, and that is not her real name, has this to say. I believe that we are more than our abuse stories. As a survivor, our stories are not just about trauma or the abuse we have experienced. We are living examples of restoration and healing. And it is in that spirit of restoration and healing for our survivors that I'm pleased to provide our casework data and recommendations related to the pending bills. Now, since year 2011, we've had the honor of supporting hundreds of child protection rescue operations conducted by law enforcement, mostly through the National Bureau of Investigation, Anti-Human Trafficking Division, and also the Philippine National Police Women and Children Protection Center. In those operations, um, the results have been promising. There have been 758 victims rescued. We had some learnings from these rescues. 43% of the survivors turned out to be 12 years old or younger. And in about 60% of the exploiters turned out to be parents, relatives, close family, friends of the victims. We also found that 38% of survivors were rescued in sibling groups, necessitating uh, very careful aftercare planning and assessment of, of their recovery pathways. Uh, I'm pleased to report that there have been at least 113 convictions related to online sexual exploitation of children and that 80% of these convictions were actually obtained through plea bargaining, which minimizes the involvement of a child in court. Uh, during COVID-19, it was mentioned actually by, by Sir Rami earlier that it gets worse during COVID-19. And uh, I'm pleased to report that law enforcement continued its campaign to rescue children. Uh, about 45 rescue operations conducted so far since the beginning of the pandemic uh, at least 148 victims rescued, uh, 30 arrested, and 24 convicted, five of these convictions through video conferencing. And the promulgation through video conferencing allows the victims to not have to physically appear. Uh, so it lessens risk uh, of their re-traumatization and also exposure. Now, uh, on the basis of these 
learnings, we, we would like to speak uh, to some of the specific portions in the bills and give some recommendations. We support a whole of society approach. And uh, we believe that we each have a, of course, a role to play in child protection. The expansion of the ACAT members in the related bills is actually a positive acknowledgement of this uh, approach and how it is necessary. Second, uh, available technologies and rules must be maximized. And I was happy to find that the bills are also very compatible with current solutions allowed by the Supreme Court. Some of these are electronic inquest, pre bargaining, video in depth interviews, remote testimony, and video conferencing. Third, because of the, the sheer importance of rescuing children, we support an increase to law enforcement capacity. And it is a welcome development that the bills have new tools given to our enforcers to, to keep up with the challenges of enforcing law in a digital age. Um, we also support increase to budget and structure of our law enforcement units. Um, increases to the NBI Anti-Human Trafficking Division annual budget to ensure they can operate more. And also we support reconfiguring the Women and Children Protection Center as a national operation support unit so they can better uh, be there for the rescue of children. Uh, fourth and final, we want to see a reduction in that two-year time where a victim suffers before they are rescued. And more importantly, preventing the abuse through effective law enforcement. Uh, we support how the bill, uh, specifically Senate Bill 2068 via Section 9, uh, holds an accountability or gives accountability to both ISPs and internet content hosts. And we found that it is through proactive detection and reporting of this crime that that two-year period can be reduced and that prevention can happen through effective law enforcement. And just because it's such an important matter, I had one last slide here on uh, considering how to increase capacity and resources for our frontline law enforcers, because their effective work is what will prevent victims such as Charito from ever having to be abused in the first place. And I will end the presentation there. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you so much also, uh, Attorney Aritao. Now let's hear from Plan International Philippines through uh, its representative, Ms. Alexandra Pura. Or if not, Ms. Pura, will it be Shigemi Muramatsu? -san? No, it's me, Senator yes. Lisa. All right. Thank Can you. you the well? Can hear you very well. Okay, Bob. Hahabol ako ng pagbati. Belated happy birthday. Salamat. Happy Women's Month. Salamat. Okay, I'll go directly to the point, no? Kasi malamig gusto magsalita. Malamig salamat sa invitation, and we know that tomorrow there will be a technical working group meeting, and we will provide our more detailed inputs there, no? And uh, we have been providing ground-level information to complementary bills filed, such as the Safe Spaces Act, the Trafficking in Persons bills, uh, and bills filed in the House of Representatives, especially on OSAEC. So we'll be ready tomorrow for Senator Risa for the TWG. Uh, but just to inform our uh, senators, uh, Senate uh, staff and our colleagues in the civil society organizations and government that since 2016, PLAN has been contributing to the fight against commercial and online sexual exploitation of children through projects with Girls Advocacy Alliance, the Cyber Safe Spaces, and the Collaborative Action Against Trafficking Across the Country. No, so our experiences have been contributing to our inputs no, into policies and programs of government. Uh, we have also conducted a study with UNICEF and UP Manila to analyze the social norms surrounding OSAEC and the most important drivers uh, which are important to address the root causes of this um, big issue. Uh, we would like to express our full support to the amendments uh, which takes into account new forms of violence, exploitation, and abuse. And just to reiterate the magnitude, no? uh, according to UNICEF, one in three internet users worldwide is a child. And in 2018 alone, 122 million children went online. So that's the magnitude worldwide. And in the Philippines, 
In our survey on the state of the world's girls, 7 out of 10 Filipino girls get harassed in social media. 8, eight out of 10 experience harassment online. So platforms for transactional relationships have also increased during the pandemic. No? So this posed significant challenges for safeguarding. Um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, also ending violence against women at OSAEC means not just protecting our girls and young women from overt acts of violence, but reducing their vulnerability to abuse and exploitation. So this means not forgetting or overlooking the root causes of violence. And basic needs are not being met. Food and income security is still a big problem. Girls and young women do not yet enjoy equal rights and opportunities, and in the extreme, are still treated as commodities and objects to be traded and exploited. So I'm here also today with Attorney Noemi Barrientos of the Children's Legal Bureau, and she would also provide more details on our work on OSAEC and our inputs to the bills uh, being harmonized. Thanks, Senator Risa, and I'd like to call on Attorney Barrientos if it's possible. Thank you, Ms. Pura. Well, at the start, I had said, if possible, just one presenter per organization. But uh, since uh, you've been mentioned, Attorney Barrientos, uh, would you mind making a very brief uh, presentation in a minute or so? Because we still have uh, other resource persons as well. And of course, I look forward to your participation in the technical working group tomorrow. If you don't mind, Attorney Noemi, in about a minute. Annette, if you could. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Senator Risa, and um, for everyone who are here, um, all of us are advocates for women and children. Um, the Children's Legal Bureau have been prosecuting um, cases involving um, child trafficking and online sexual exploitation of children. We believe is a uh, human trafficking is modern day slavery and um, human rights violation and the worsening um, poverty situation and dearth of economic opportunities we have right now make our women and children very vulnerable. And um, here in Cebu particularly, since um, CLP had been rescuing um, trafficked uh, children since 2010, 2009, and we are actually witness to the change, you know, transmogrification, as we say, to uh, the face of human trafficking from traditional face-to-face uh, victimization of women and children to cyber sex. Um, it could be remembered that it is here in Cebu that uh, the very first cases uh, involving uh, cyber sex became famous and um, Cebu had been known uh, to be a, like a capital here in the Philippines, which uh, the province would want to dispute. Um, we are actually uh, uh, the, the traffickers which are mostly foreigners, are extensively utilizing technology in increasing access to its victims while the perpetrators are hiding in the comforts of anonymity and physical inaccessibility. So it is actually very difficult with the human traffickers um, using online technology and platform uh, for law enforcement to go after them. And then present definition of human trafficking does not encompass the recent exploitative means and purpose of trafficking. And we are happy that uh, online sexual exploitation and abuse of uh, both women and children are now uh, being incorporated in the proposed uh, amendment to the definition of the anti-trafficking in persons. Um, the present law does not address the use of information and communication technology as a means to perpetuate human trafficking and this other exploitative uh, purpose of slavery or slavery or um, voluntary servitude. And we are witness to how law enforcement is continuously challenged by the use of the advanced information and communication technology, um, particularly by the use of online and digital platforms by perpetrators. So it is very difficult uh, to prosecute uh, this genre of abuse. Um, we therefore support the bill because uh, we see that it proposes uh, more cooperation between government agencies such as the DICT, the DOT, um, Department of Tourism, Department of Health. In, in other words, we appreciate and we see the need that there must be a comprehensive service to be given to uh, human trafficking 
victims as well as to prevent also incidents of human trafficking. And um, we take particular note of the fact that the proposed bill um, would increase the cooperation of the uh, private sector. Um, we see that the private sector is indispensable in this fight against human trafficking, particularly those in the information uh, technology, uh, such as the internet service providers, the internet content hosts, and internet cafes, kiosks. Every, every um, private sector mentioned in the uh, proposed bill actually should be made part in this campaign uh, against uh, trafficking. Uh, local governments also must um, likewise uh, be made to level up in this effort to respond to human trafficking. And we can see that these are already included in the proposed bill, um, including the uh, uh, providing for more services for the uh, victims of human trafficking. So with the proposed amendments to the law, we hope that uh, we will be helping more women and children be safe from human trafficking. So thank you very much for the uh, proposals and for this opportunity, Sandra. Nagang salamat po, Attorney Noemi. Um, now, before we hear from the resource persons from our next two women's organizations, gusto ko lang uh, balikan sandali, i-check kung ang NTC ay online na ulit. Uh, because uh, Sen. Aimi, who together with Senators uh, Sherwin, Cynthia, and Pia, uh, is an author of the bills we are considering, and I'm is interested in the duty of ISP providers and uh, online platforms. So, nandito na po ba si uh, ulit si at, uh, Engineer Walshen? And are you ready, ma'am, to uh, present your your uh, comments on the bills? Ma'am, good morning po ulit. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, we don't have our official presentation, but... Uh, um, to submit po, the NTC supports uh, all the bills or measures proposed to uh, amend RA-9775, particularly Section 9, specifying the duties of all internet service providers and uh, identify, identifying their of uh, the various entities responsible for, one, access to the internet, and two, hosting of contents in the internet. Uh, Madam Chair, at the House of Representatives, we will be submitting po, uh, the NTC submitted uh, its, uh, its uh, uh, responsibility to submit uh, terms that would distinguish internet service providers to that of other entities that will host contents. And um, uh, with that, uh, Madam Chair, we would like to... Uh, participate in the TWG meeting tomorrow. Uh, we are trying to verify, Madam Chair, if the NTC is included as a member of the TWG. That's why, sorry po, uh, certainly are. po namin yung, yung invitation. And uh, we would like to inform uh, the Honorable uh, Committee that uh, today the NTC has issued uh, around 68 CHOCOS orders to internet service providers for them to explain their compliance with Section 9 of RA-9775. And we are still continuing our issuance of these orders. And uh, for, for those entities po or ISPs that have already complied with the, uh, their answer to our SHOCOS orders, the NTC is has ordered all uh, regional offices of the NTC to conduct actual uh, inspection of uh, of uh, the ISP's compliance to filtering or blocking of uh, internet sites that that are considered to contain um, uh, osaic material or uh, materials that are uh, against uh, uh, child pornographic materials, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Chair. Uh, we would uh, gladly uh, submit our position paper and uh, rest assured the NTC uh, supports uh, the bills and measures. Yes. 
Okay. Salamat, uh, Engineer Walsh, and certainly we welcome your participation in the TWG tomorrow. At mabuhay sa pagiging proactive ng NPC no, through your show cause orders and inspections even before we can finalize these bills. Yes, Sen Aimee. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, yes, and uh, um, in the uh, effort to be proactive, baka naman may masuggest pa ang NPC kasi at the end of the day, ISPs have been truly remiss in uh, monitoring and uh, and uh, uh, stopping this when I think the technology is widely available. So baka may maisip pa yung NPC na mas effective and mas maganda sana sila na ang tututok sa ISP. And on the yung NPI, and I was going to suggest something that uh, we should also identify, which is the AMLA. These amounts that are being um, that are being sent in payment, um, apparently there are only 50 addresses in the Philippines. So talagang sindikato siya, kasi only 50 addresses for these thousands and thousands of payments that are very small. They're in. Um, 3,000 to 4,000 uh, uh, amount, uh, 3 to 4,000 pesos lang siya, pero nasa 50 addresses lang daw, yun ang pagkasabi ng Interpol. So I was wondering kung yung uh, Madam Chair, kailangan ba natin hingan rin ang position at uh, mga recommendations? Alam na again that the President has already issued an executive order but perhaps these solutions um, are the concrete way to finally put an end to this. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat din, Sen. Aimee. Point very well taken for the committee to seek the comment of AMLA. And if even if possible, also their participation in tomorrow's uh, technical working group, if still possible. Could I just, could the chair please just ask for a quick comment from Google to the points just raised by Sen. Aimee? Uh, from Attorney Gonzalez of Google's Government Affairs and Public Policy. Or if Attorney Gonzalez, yes, Attorney Gonzalez, would you like to comment please on yes. for Google on Sen Aimee's uh, question just now? Mm. I think we lost him. We, we, I just saw Attorney Gonzalez and he's disappeared. Yes, and Kiko. Uh, yes. Uh, may, may we know if we also have representatives from Facebook or uh, Twitter? Um, because earlier the resource person mentioned social media platforms. As, uh, as we did invite them, Sen Kiko, uh, Facebook and Twitter as well. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Facebook. Just Facebook. Unfortunately, they they are not. They were not able to send a resource person for today's hearing. Uh, the committee will follow them up, uh, Sen Kiko, also for their inputs, even until the technical working group tomorrow. Yes, uh, yes, it, because precisely, uh, just to place this on record, uh, uh, my understanding is many of these. The proliferation of the abuses are, are uh, through fake accounts in Facebook and Twitter. In fact, the DSWD and the NBI uh, a few weeks ago reported uh, uh, online adoptions by uh, Facebook accounts that were fake, 48 Facebook accounts. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it's, you know, if, why isn't Facebook here? Uh, are, are they in? Even interested to address the challenges that uh, you know these uh, these violations of our children's rights. Uh, the least they could have done was appear here for our the committee and uh, and uh, explain uh, their own policies. And it's a, it's most unfortunate that their absence here is is uh, uh, you know uh, prevents us from getting their side. Uh, if I may uh, quote the article on Philippine Star, DSWD has actually monitored 48 face, fake FB accounts saying they facilitate online adoption. And uh, lawyer Bernadette Abejo of the Interagency Adoption Board says they have complained of these social media accounts that claim to process online adoption. Uh, and uh, if I may quote her, we can only complain so much and try to shut all these sites down, but without 
the help of, uh, say, Facebook itself, we cannot close them down. So why isn't Facebook here? This is most unfortunate. Uh, uh, are they, do they, I wish we could get their explanation because it, it appears like, you know, uh, parang, are, are they above the law? Are, you know, sila ba ay uh, hindi marunong makipag-usap uh, sa mga gobyerno na tinututukan at naghahanap ng solusyon dito sa online uh, uh, sexual abuse and exploitation. Sayang, uh, sana naka, nakapaghanda sila ng presentation nila para mag, makapagpaliwanag. For the record, uh, we, we, we are concerned, very concerned about their absence. In fact, Twitter, I, I'm told that Twitter is also a source of uh, mm -hmm. online exploitation. Uh, and they're also not here. Yes, yes. Points very, very well taken, uh, San Kiko. The chair shares your grave concern. And uh, we will express this in writing to Facebook. Kung bakit hindi man lang nila napaunlakan ang ibitasyon ng komite. And uh, we will seek their participation at least in the technical working group tomorrow. The committee is also currently working on a uh, administrative adoption bill. Um, on the bills originally filed by Senators Grace and Bong Revilla. And in that hearing, also took note of what uh, San Kiko has placed on record about Facebook's uh, reported role, uh, even in that scene of um, uh, Facebook facilitated adoption. Uh, yes, San Kiko, and then Senator. Yes, Kiko. Yes, Kiko. Okay, so, uh, you know, we, we don't want to quarrel with the private sector, but. Uh, uh, they're not here. Uh, what uh, you know? Somebody has, you know, experts. Some experts, online technology, digital technology experts, have actually described Facebook as a crime scene. Uh, particularly, these accounts, these fake accounts, uh, undertaking all these uh, criminal activities. Wag naman sa nang mauwi sa sampahan sila ng kaso para sila magcooperate. Uh, hindi ba? Uh, the least they could have done was send somebody and participate in this online. Hindi naman, hindi naman sila pinapapuntang personally eh. Mahirap ba yun? No? Uh, it's time we, we you know, put our, our foot down, ika nga. These abuses are happening in plain sight, for lack of a better term, in these social media accounts. They're making money out of these uh, these uh, activities uh, and they you know sana maglang nagpadala ng representative dito sa ating hearing uh, madam chair tapos technical working group na bukas so ibig sabihin uh, they get a free pass uh, and and will not be able to explain perhaps a separate hearing uh, on that particular issue could be undertaken by the committee uh, so that we don't delay the uh, you know the uh, 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 legislation on this matter, Madam Chair. Thank you for the very uh, helpful suggestion, Senator Kiko. The committee will act on it, uh, a separate hearing uh, on that issue of Facebook facilitated, reported Facebook facilitated adoptions. Um, and the chair shares in the serious uh, word of advice or uh, warning. Um, that San Kiko has raised vis-a-vis uh, -vis Facebook earlier. Yes, and Aimee. And then yes, I will and call Attorney uh, Francisco. Yes, and Aimee. Yes, by way of uh, by way of reiterating uh, the concerns of Senator Kiko, uh, totoo nga na yung uh, mga kinatawag ng Christmas bundles online, nitong mga pornographic material, um, kinibenta ng mga kabataan para bumili at yung masaklap, para bumili ng gadgets and to pay internet bills for their distance learning. Po. Some of these amounts were as low as 150 pesos for the so-called Christmas bundles over Facebook, Twitter, and other social networks. I'm also wondering, in addition to Facebook and uh, the other social networks that we are familiar with, uh, would it help us to call on GCash or PayPal? Kasi ganyan yung bayaran eh. Baka naman meron silang method 
na matuklasan kung sino nagbabayad. It's apparently quite simple because as I mentioned earlier, uh, there are fewer than 50 Philippine Internet Protocol addresses. So nakasindikato rin yung mga bata eh. Ilan lang pala yung address na pinagmumulan. So ito yung um, na-reveal. I'm not certain what this group is. Perhaps the chairwoman is more familiar or the other resource persons. One of the better studies by the International Justice Mission quotes the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Saan po yan? Baka naman we can get more data from them because they uh, seem to be uh, um, on these uh, cases from uh, a long, long time, over a decade na. So, ito lang yung mga suggestion na kung maari. At yung AMLA, dapat uh, talagang maging masigasig sila kasi sila mismo ang nagsasabi na may suspicious transactions related to child porn. Abay, kung alam nila, bakit hindi naman nila ginagawa ng paraan na tigilin. Yun. So, thank you very much po. Thank you very much also, Sen Aimee. Uh, yes, let me just note about the points on AMLA. And yes, I'll call Sen Kiko now and then we'll go to uh, Google. I, th I see yes. the Attorney yes. Gonzalez online and then the International Justice Mission. Sen Kiko. Yes, uh, and I'd like uh, Google to hear this too because uh, they can comment. Uh, for example, the possible crimes for uh, social media outlets who allow for their portals uh, uh, to engage in such uh, activities of uh, allowing fake accounts uh, to go through or, or have online uh, adoption. Section 5C of uh, RA 9208, uh, which is the Expanded Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act. 5C reads, acts that promote trafficking in persons. The following acts which promote, facilitate trafficking in persons shall be unlawful, advertise, publish, print, broadcast, distribute, or cause the advertisement and advertisement, publication, printing, broadcast, or distribution by any means, including the use of information technology and the internet, of any brochure, flyer, or any propaganda material that promotes trafficking in persons. It's a penalty of 15 years. Also, Republic uh, Act 9208, uh, Section 4B, Punishes accomplices who willing, knowingly aid the bed cooperate with the trafficking of persons. Uh, Section 5A in relation to 4C of Republic Act 10, uh, 175 for the Cyber Crime, Cyber Crime Prevention Act. Punishes aiding and abetting in the commission of cyber sex, the willful engagement, maintenance, control, or operation directly or indirectly of any lascivious exhibition or sexual organs or sexual activity which the with the aid of a computer system for a favor or consideration, uh, among others, meron pang anti-pornography act. dapat masampulan ang mga ito para maging mas mag-attend man lang ng hearing natin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, thank you so much also, San Kiko. And I'd like to acknowledge the presence of and also uh, call to speak uh, one of our authors of the bills being considered uh, today, Senator Pia. Yes, Senator Pia, before I go to back to Google and IBM. Senator Pia. Thank you, Madam Chair. This will be very short. I'd just like to support the uh, observations of uh, Senator Tito Pangilinan. Huh? Um, I was about to say before he came in and uh, uh, related uh, the relevant laws no, that, you know, in other hearings, uh, we hold in contest these persons who are uh, critical in our understanding of uh, possible violation of certain rights. And uh, I... I also find it extremely disturbing that uh, your hearing, uh, our hearing chosen by your owner, is just ignored by Facebook. In the recent hearings held by um, uh, our committee on trade, chaired by Senator Pimentel, uh, you know, the discussion there was on the penalties of the, um, of the platforms uh, that were hosting the, uh, the shopping sites you know, where people buy online about products. Ito, we're talking about human beings na practically binibili din, binibenta din. So, at, in that hearing, no, which I'm just using by analogy, uh, there were bills that actually held them 
um, jointly and severally liable with defective products, which I'm not, I'm not supporting. That, that I don't actually agree with. <laughs> Excuse me. However, my point is, we go so far as drafting... Can you hear me, Madam Chair? Is my signal clear? Yes, uh, Senpia, it's, yes. it's clear. Okay. A bit soft, yeah. but uh, clear enough, yes. Okay. The, um, the photos of... Your photos were going in and out, so I thought my signal was... Um, was not steady. Anyway, yes, actually, we, yes. we we go as far we go as far as as um, considering uh, jointly and severally liable platforms that sell defective products. And here we are. Uh, we're just being ignored by platforms that I said are practically selling also our children. So I join His Honor Senator Pangilinan in uh, calling for either a separate hearing, but let's not let it get by. Um, just because her honor has a technical working group, which I support, it, it's up to her honor to move on. But uh, if we must have a separate hearing, I, I support that because they must be held accountable for the role that they play. Um, there are a lot of documentaries already around. I'm not sure if uh, uh, any of you here have seen that, but really showing how the role of social media is contributing to a serious, um, uh, seriously damaging our our youth now from from their body image issues, from suicide rate, and from our platforms for um, for for adoptions online and even trafficking. So on that note, the second point I want to make is um, I'm not sure because I just uh, came on if uh, DOJ has already given their piece on the trafficking law, but I just like to put on record. That, that was a bill uh, being pushed by USEC MVR, which uh, she forwarded to me a few years ago. And uh, obviously, I would like to hear from them because that was actually a DOJ bill, that uh, uh, a DOJ version that we were pushing for amendments to existing laws which are preventing prosecution. The team of USEC uh, VR have been very active in anti trafficking, and so it is their experience on the ground that led to the drafting of these provisions. And then the third point, Your Honor, is just to clarify, uh, Her Honor mentioned ad administrative adoption, which, as you know, I very much support uh, removing the judiciary system. But Her Honor mentioned the authors, and again, I would like to point out that the comprehensive bill on alternative care included administrative proceedings. So uh, I am also one who is pushing for that, Your Honor, just for the record, because we do have uh, sectors here involved, and I very much have always been in the front line pushing for not just administrative adoption, but the overhaul of the adoption process. So thank you, and I'll be here for, to, to support Your Honor's um, uh, direction uh, on this bill. Thank you also, Senator Pico, for the intervention, which I very much support. Thank you. Thank you very much, San Pia. The chair confirms that uh, San Pia is the author of a comprehensive bill, which includes uh, the matter of administrative adoption. Uh, and yes, uh, DOJ made the presentation earlier through State Council Attorney Quintana, but they are still around. So open uh, to uh, any, uh, further questions from San Pia and the other colleagues here this morning. And yes, uh, for the record, I confirm that Facebook was sent an invitation by the committee. We will ask them to provide an explanation for their absence. And yes, we will consider, as advised by Senators Kiko and Pia, we will consider holding them in contempt. So thank you very much for that. Uh, may I, yes, may I call now to, to give responses to the manifestations uh, and the issues raised by the colleagues. Uh, may I call uh, to re respond uh, Attorney Francisco of NBI, Attorney Gonzalez of uh, Google, and also uh, Attorney Aritao from the International Justice Mission before we go on to our resource persons from the Women's Legal and Human Rights Bureau and the Democratic Socialist Women of the Philippines. So, Attorney Francisco, please. Yes, uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, I would like, I just would like to add to the uh, observations by our honorable senators regarding the, the use of the different social media platforms in perpetrating various crimes. Uh, as I have been um, leading the Anti-Human Trafficking Division of the NBI, we have observed that these uh, social media platforms like Facebook uh, has been utilized by uh, different uh, syndicates 
especially in uh, in human trafficking uh, activities, in illegal human trafficking activities. And uh, we have observed that uh, in 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 uh, Facebook, there are a lot of uh, uh, child exploitation uh, materials and also uh, prostitutions being uh, promoted. Uh, not only in Facebook, but also in, in Twitters and other social media platforms. And uh, in this regard, ma'am, I uh, would like to inform you that the uh, Facebook uh, has been reporting to the National Center for Missing and Exploited uh, Children, which is a U.S.-based um, office. And um, maybe if we can... Uh, by, the, by virtue of uh, a law, we can um, I mean, mandate the FB also to report to us directly. Uh, kasi nga po, ang nangyayari, this U.S. space uh, social media platforms, uh, nag-report lang po sila doon sa National Center for Visual Exploited Children uh, in cases of online sexual exploitation of children. And uh, in some jurisdictions, as we have, I had attended some uh, trainings, uh, in other countries like France, uh, this social media platform uh, na, na, na nakikipag-coordinate po ang, ang, ang government nila para uh, ma-encourage ang, ang Facebook, for example, na mag-report sa kanila and, or makipag-cooperate sa mga law enforcement uh, authorities by threatening na hindi sila papayagan na mag-broadcast sa particular country na yan. So maybe uh, we can also adapt uh, this strategy para at least medyo ta meron tayong, kumbaga sa ano ma, may ipin tayo. Uh, dahil siyempre, uh, since minaalaw din uh, sa company natin yung pagbo-broadcast ng social media platforms na yun, dapat meron din silang responsibility directly sa gobyerno natin ma'am. Uh, para po uh, hindi rin nahihirapan ang mga law enforcement uh, authorities sa mga anti-trafficking efforts natin. Kasi as we all know, aside from the Law on Cyber Prevention Act, meron tayong rules uh, promulgate, promulgated by the Supreme Court regarding cyber warrants. And nahihirapan po kami actually ma'am na kumuha ng mga, mga evidence na na, na dinadaan doon sa mga social media platforms na yun. And also, uh, kung, kung maisishare ko rin po sa inyo, uh, pati po yung mga telcos, mga internet service providers, uh, hindi rin po nakikipag-operate sa amin. Marami po silang mga alibis sa mga information na hinihingi namin. Even yung mga basic information like yung mga subscribers information, uh, pag, pag hinihingan po namin sila para po ma-rescue namin yung mga, mga bata, hindi po kami kaagad-agad uh, binibigyan ng information. And even, ini-invoke pa nila yung Data Privacy Act. So, ang, ang hirap-hirap po talaga, kahit po nakikita na ng mga mata natin, yung mga uh, abusive materials online, Pero dahil nga po may mga may batas tayo, meron tayong uh, cyber uh, warrant rules ng Supreme Court, nahihirapan pa rin po yung mga law enforcement uh, agencies na uh, kumuha ng mga information na makakatulong po ng mag-rescue uh, ng mga bata at manghuli ng mga perpetrators. So, Francisco, if I may just interrupt you, but Senator Kiko, I think, would like to address the point you're um, discussing now. Also, if yes, before, just before Senator, just like to acknowledge the presence in the hearing uh, of uh, Senator Cynthia, also an author of the bills we're considering. Yes, Senator Kiko. Uh, yes, ma'am po. Just, just very quickly, uh, Attorney uh, Janet, uh, I identified uh, a number of provisions of specific laws, uh, uh, for anti-child pornography, hindi po pwede sampahan ng kaso, yung uh, social media. Uh, at uh, dahil pag may kaso na, may pwede nang uh, i-compel yung judicial processes para i-turn over, i-preserve yung evidence, etc. Uh, have, have we tried? Have we tried uh, filing cases against uh, these uh, social media giants? 
Um, Attorney actually, Francisco, po- before you respond, could I also call on Senator Pia? Because I think she also has a uh, point about what you are discussing. And maybe you can take her and San Kiko's uh, questions together. Senator Pia? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Actually, it's uh, for the resource persons or whoever. I just forgot to mention. Um, you know, in Instagram, they take down fake accounts, no? And I know Facebook also takes down fake accounts. So it is very disturbing that um, something as blatant as this, um, like I said, practically selling our kids because they are illegal adoption center, cannot be just taken down. And, and then you know, verify it. It's no less than in our, our own our own agencies that are saying it. So that's why I, it goes back to why are they so... Um, you know, they, they, they don't seem to have, they don't seem to put this on their priority when it is so blatantly out there. So I wanted to point that out, um, that if you can take down a fake account, you should be able to take down this, these accounts that are selling people. You know what? In case it was wrong information, they can always put it back up. You know, what, what, what major harm was that was done? Uh, and the next point I wanted to raise was about Instagram. Now, I don't know if, uh, I think you should also be, include, you should also include them in the hearings because uh, just like Facebook, just like Twitter, they're out there, they're posting things. Uh, we should also be very much um, conscious of that. And I had one more point, which at the moment I, I did not jot down, but I'll just jump in later on again. I can't recall it right now. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Anthea. Uh, a resource persons, please, if you could respond to her point next. But uh, Attorney Francisco, if you could please return to the uh, question of San Kiko, why are, have cases not been filed against these violators? Uh, yes, ma'am, if I may respond. Actually, ma'am, uh, through the Interagency Council Against Child Pornography, uh, merong, pinag-aaralan po namin yung possibility na, na masampahan nga po ng kaso yung yung mga involved na mga internet service providers etc but uh, but medyo nahihirapan po kami dahil uh, meron po kami kailangan pa na i-prove na naging remiss talaga sila sa mga duties nila na i-take down or uh, tanggalin yung yung mga exploitative materials na yun or Ma- kailangan po namin na ma-improve na talagang dumaan sa system nila yung mga child pornographic materials. So, very technical po talaga. And uh, un- until now, uh, we're still trying our best na i-identify yung mga kaso, especially yung mga kaso na, na meron ng mga uh, resolution na talagang may mga child pornography uh, materials na dumaan sa, sa system na isang particular na ISP or uh, telecommunication companies. So, uh, uh, maybe ma'am, through the IACAP or the Interagency Agency Council Against Trafficking, mapag-aralan pa po namin yung, yung strategy na yun. And also, uh, with respect naman po dun sa mga fake accounts ng Facebook, actually, cooperative din naman po ang Facebook. Uh, kapag ka nare-report sa kanila yung mga... Um, mga child pornographic materials na na ipopost dun sa sa platform nila uh, and meron po din silang uh, parang uh, system kung saan ang mga law enforcement authorities makakapag-report but then of course ma meron pa rin po silang mga hinihingi like for example mga URL etc etc and then you have to apply for search warrant para uh, maibigay din nila subsequently yung mga information na kailangan mo para ma-identify mo yung particular uh, FB account holder. So, dun po, dun po sa, kahit na po makakuha kami ng search warrant, katulad na po ng mga ginawa po namin, actually, meron po kami mga lima to ten cases na in ng search warrant, pero ang Facebook, kapag ko uh, in-implement po namin sa kanila, binibigay po ng Facebook naman yung information na like, like yung mga ISPs, yung mga IP address. Pero pagka in-implement naman po namin yun sa telcos natin dito sa Pilipinas, hindi naman po kami binibigyan ng information. And and uh, probably of the record, ma'am, I can share to you kung ano yung mga responses na natatanggap namin eh, na galing dito sa mga telecommunication companies. Like, uh, first, hindi po nila ma-identify yung particular IP address kasi kasama ito sa thousands of IP addresses sa isang particular po na, na, na number. 
And pangalawa, uh, ini-invoke din po rin nila yung Data Privacy Act. So ang dami po kasi talagang mga highly technical na issues na uh, kailangan po namin uh, uh, masold and kailangan po namin uh, magawa para ma-assertain po namin yung, yung particular uh, householder na nag nagpo-post ng mga exploitative materials online. So, uh, uh, please do follow. share those uh, with the chair, Attorney Francisco, so that I can share it with my colleagues in the committee para makita namin gaano ka-cooperative o hindi itong mga stakeholders at magabayan kami sa pag-finalize nitong bill or bills. Yes, um, yes Senator Rico yes. and then Senator Yes, very quickly. Ma'am, uh, would you have any uh, info? Would you have the information? Bukong bang sinampahang kaso na involved yung telco at uh, social media platforms on a uh, cybercrime. Meron na ba? Ma'am, uh, sir, actually po, uh, sa end po ng, ng anti-human trafficking division, wala pa po. Uh, yan nga po yung pinag-aaralan namin through the Interagency Council Against uh, Child Pornography. Kasi yeah. nga po, marami pa po kami kailangan na makuwang uh, evidence para masampahan po namin ng kaso itong mga mga telcos or mga I, I social guess, media. I guess, ma'am, ma dapat siguro pakiusapan natin si Secretary uh, uh Guevara no na create a separate team prepare necessary possible case build up and let's let's file cases if necessary kasi kung wala pang kaso eh, talagang they will treat us with di ba you know almost con contemptible behavior di ba baka kasi I i'm not saying you know that uh uh we we, we should give them their day in court definitely di ba but uh, the fact that there are these laws and yet social media platforms and the telcos who are uh, accountable diba, under these uh, cybercrime laws have not been filed any cases, uh, at least in your division. That's something uh, ano na, look out na ng executive department yan, ng prosecution yan, hindi po, hindi po ba, ng gobyerno. So sana mapag-aralan ninyo no, na sino ang pwedeng managot dito sa mga telco o social media platform, dito sa mga criminal activity na nangyayari affecting our children. Uh, yes, Thank po, you, Sen Kiko. Attorney, uh, before you continue, let's hear Sen Pia. Sen okay, Pia. Um, yes, um, I, I remembered now my point, uh, Madam Chairperson. Um, I just wanted to put on record that uh, just, you know, through our research, um, I read, I came across an article in the, it's in the U.S. Uh, wherein uh, Facebook responded to a lawsuit in the U.S., no? And I, I will quote, uh, according to Facebook, human trafficking is abhorrent and is not allowed on Facebook. We use technology to thwart this kind of abuse, and we encourage people to use the reporting links found across our site so that our team of experts can review the content quickly, according to Facebook. So, but again, there also was a pending case. So I also go back to support Senator Kiko's statement that, you know, uh, anyone tends to take these things more seriously when there are cases. Uh, in response to Attorney Francisco's comments about, uh, I know the job of a lawyer, obviously you have to build your strong case, but if there are um, um, gaps in the law, this is exactly what the hearing is for, right? Uh, exactly to find out what are those gaps that may be the, the um, burden of proof or whatever uh, is necessary for us to, to make your job easier. That's what this hearing is for, moving forward. But hopefully we have enough to get started because um, I, I, I have to agree with Senator Tico that um, sometimes these people will only listen no, when, you, when you file a case and I think they will take it more seriously. But having said that, I don't know if it was reported, Madam Chair, maybe you can just give me a quick response if, if uh, anyone has mentioned have, have we actually done these reports through you know, the links? We all know of that, naman, di ba? report here. So I'm just curious if uh, there have been any reports filed or made by our um, law enforcement agencies, at least um, you know, in pre-filing pre, pre of cases. So that at least have we heard any feedback? I might have missed it because I was late. You can just summarize it for me and I'll go back to the, the YouTube uh, recording to get the whole story though. Thank you. Thank you, Senpia. Attorney uh, Francisco, maybe a quick response and then so that we can hear finally from Google and IJM before we complete our uh, resource persons from the women's organizations. So, Attorney Francisco, yung mga pagre-report po, uh, is that uh, 
uh, namuo na ba yan at least as uh, preparation towards filing of cases? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, actually, ma marami na po kami mga report na ginawa at even yung mga NGOs, mga private citizens, nagre-report po talaga sa, take for example po sa Facebook. And kaya nga po, uh, kasi po uh, prerequisite din po sa pag apply ng search warrant yung mag-report ka. And hindi mo po makukuha yung mga IP address if hindi ka pa po magre-report sa Facebook and mag apply po ng, ng search warrant eventually para makuha mo yung information na mabibigay sa iyo ng Facebook. So, uh, ginagawa po ng mga law enforcer uh, authorities po yun, yung reporting. And then, um, and also, uh, in response po kay, uh, kay Honorable uh, Senator uh, Pangilinan, uh, yung, yung Department of Justice po at saka po ang, ang DSWD, uh, actually po, uh, nag-create po ng task force para nga po pag-aralan po yung yung possibility na ma masampahan ng kaso itong mga uh, telecommunication companies and and uh, internet service providers po. So, uh, hopefully po, um, meron naman po representative din po dito, dito sa DOJ and sa probably IACAC, P, IACAT, uh, ma matutuloy po namin yung pag-aaral po namin yun. Thank you po, Madam Chair. Yung pag-aaral. Salamat, Madam Chair. Yes, thank you po. Madam Chair, what was the response to those who, 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 sent, who sent reports? Kasi supposed to be may response yun. Ano yung response? Uh, Ma'am, tinetake down po nila uh, immediately yung yung site or or yung yung account nung, nung uh, ho FB holder na yun. Uh, and doon din po actually kami nagkakaproblema minsan. Kasi po, pag tinake down po yung, yung uh, account na yun, hindi na po namin makukuha pa yung iba pang ebidensya na kailangan po namin para mag-apply po kami ng search warrant, ma'am. Kasi po, uh, pagka nag-report ko po, kailangan mo po pong ipakita sa kanila na eto yun yung particular na na post na pinapa-take down mo at eto yung ginawa ng, ng, ng account holder. Uh, maybe from, from, from the Office of the Cybercrime later on po, ang um, uh, masasabi po na ate yung mismong procedure kung paano po kami uh, nagsasampa ng kaso or kumukuha ng information dito sa mga uh, social media platforms and uh, ISP providers po. Tama po, uh, okay. Attorney Francisco. Yes, uh, Sen Pia, but just okay. before I, I call Sen Pia, yes, uh, later, uh, gaya ng sinabi ni Attorney uh, Francisco, uh, DOJ Office of Cybercrime uh, might be able to present on and explain the reports of OSAEC from that National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. So, at hanggang sa TWG bukas, how to stop the harm being done to women and children, but still facilitating investigation and prosecution. Yes, and Pia, before we go to Google and IJM. Oh, so because I just want to to um, connect the dots, and I don't mind if it's continued in the TWG, that's fine, but I just find it um, confusing or uh, maybe it's my lack of understanding of the technical um, uh, process that uh, it appears that uh, NBI through Attorney Francisco is saying that they're caught between a rock and a hard place such that once she reports it, they will take it down and therefore they lose access to the site. So um, that's a gap that we need to, we need to um, plug because... Then meanwhile, while you're building your case, you're allowing that site to go on, no? I mean, I mean, if that's a gap that that Facebook can address simply by saying, okay, I mean, obviously they agreed because they shut it down. Um, is it because now because of privacy they don't want to give you the the account number, or they'll give it to law enforcers, but maybe not to the public? So there's got to be a way to address that. So I just leave that for the technical working group to address, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Senpia. So let's hear now from Google. Uh, from uh, Attorney Gonzalez. Yes, I, I know, sir, that you have a five-minute presentation, but if you could save that for when I call the different private sector groups to make your presentations. But for now, Attorney Gonzalez, baka you could respond to the uh, quite num uh, you know growing number of questions uh, from my colleagues about Google itself. And also, uh, may pagbanggit kanina sa GCash. So your comments, please, on these issues. Um, good good morning, po. Thank you, po, for inviting us. So I'm Eves Gonzalez, po. I do I represent Google. Uh, I do government affairs and public policy for Google in the Philippines. 
Um, and uh, one, one thing we wanted to share is, um, so me- mentioned po kanina yung tungkol po sa NECMEC, uh, National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. So si Google po, what it does po is anytime po a uh, report to us is sent. So for example, either a user po flags content na sexual uh, sex, child sexual abuse material po siya, or even if our automated machines are able to detect it, nire-report po namin siya kay NECMEC. So so. Uh, yung po yung sistema ng US companies that uh, kay NECMEC po sinesend. Tapos um, based on the presentations earlier, um, pinapadala po ng NECMEC yun sa uh, DOJ or dun sa Cybercrime Office po ng Philippines para po sila po yung nag-prosecute. Uh, And I think in uh, in uh, in a previous presentation, I, I heard that there were about 1 million reports sent by the platforms to NECMEC in relation to the Philippines. And I think based on the data that I have, 73 were actionable and I think there were 33 convictions that were produced. And I think uh, I'll, I'll leave the DOJ and the Cybercrime Office to to further talk about that. Um, but so, ilan po, uh, on the part of the platforms, uh, we do our part po to report these, to send this uh, information to NECMEC para po um, actionan po nung proper local government, uh, local Cybercrime Office po. Salamat, Attorney Gonzalez. Uh, colleagues, mainit talaga ito. Ha? It's very urgent. And uh, the ongoing hearing is revealing even more uh, questions than still are remaining uh, uh, answers. So uh, the chair would just like to announce that we will have another hearing specific to anti-trafficking and OSAEC, uh, specific to the issues regarding Facebook, Twitter, and other uh, online portals. So just to continue with this hearing then, can we hear from the International uh, Justice Mission uh, about the recent issues raised by uh, my colleagues? Uh, so could we hear again, please, from Attorney Aritao, if there's anything that you would like to add, Attorney, to the uh, recent questions that have been raised? Yes, with the permission of the Chair. Um, good morning once again. The study of online sexual exploitation of children that was mentioned. I can provide a link in the group chat uh, with permission from the chair. Thank and you. I will do that now. This uh, study was released in 2020 and it actually contains three separate workflows where uh, cases, uh, actual law enforcement cases uh, focused on online sexual exploitation of children over a period of time were studied and the trends were analyzed. There was also a marker capture analysis in an attempt to really look at which IP addresses in the Philippines are linked to child sexual exploitation material. And uh, one of those goals was met, which is to to try to discover how many IP addresses are linked to exploitative content. What the study uh, also shares is it's not possible after that point to further um, identify which ones are tied to very specific online sexual exploitation cases uh, of, let's say, production of live uh, streaming content. That is not yet possible given current technology, which is why uh, there are many recommendations to move from IPv4 to IPv6. I won't go into that uh, deeply, but I believe it's already on record as a recommendation. Uh, Attorney Eves mentioned over 1 million reports from NICMIC. I will also leave it to OOC to further elaborate. The Office of Cybercrime can explain the nature of these reports. We will confirm that our records also show uh, 1.2 million in 2020, up from 400,000 total reports in 2019. But we also note that there's a lot of duplication that can happen in reporting. So it's important to understand the growth as a growth in total volume of reports, but they don't each represent a single instance of exploitation. Attorney Ives mentioned 73 referrals that were actionable. Uh, What we've found is each actionable report can lead to multiple international contacts, which law enforcement can then pursue as leads in their investigations. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Aritao. Well, despite the possibility of duplication, still that 
uh, multiplication from 400,000 to 1.2 million in 2020, you know, the first year of the pandemic, that still represents a, a tripling. So thank you. And thank you very much also for sharing the link here in our chat box. Let's hear now, please, from our last two resource persons for the women's organizations before we go on to our resource persons from the private sector. I'm sorry, I, I, I hear uh, there, there's at least one... Um, audio that isn't muted. Please mute two. Do I see two? Please mute. Paki mute mo nga audio with our dear resource persons para hindi sumisingit yung audio ninyo. All right. So let's hear first from uh, Women's Legal and Human Rights Bureau. Uh, alam ko na uh, gusto nyo rin mag-share ng sites, other sites and platforms where violations of girls and women is also happening. So, Ms. Jelen Paklarin, and then last but not the least for the women's orgs, we'll hear from Democratic Socialist Women of the Philippines from Ms. Beth. Sir, paki-mute yung, somebody, somebody's audio is interfering. Paki-mute yung audio. Sir, paki-mute yung audio. Somebody's audio is interfering. All right. Can we hear, please, from uh, Ms. Jelan? Uh, Hello. Um, good morning, everyone. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair. And uh, thank you again for um, inviting WLB to be part of this um, discussion. Um, I would just like to acknowledge uh, Senator Risa that WLB along with Katwap Foundation for Media Alternatives, Saligan, uh, actually submitted um, uh, re some revisions, no, which I maybe later on um, will highlight no, in my intervention. And I think most of our recommendations were already included in the current version of the amendment on the anti-trafficking. But if I may just uh, share with you, uh, although I will not discuss this in full, this is actually the some. It's just forty-seven cases which we were able to monitor during, during uh, from July to February twenty-one, which actually a result of the um, sudden surge of online gender-based violence no, uh, during the pandemic. So you will see. Um, I'll just make it bigger. Uh, you will see the the age no of of those uh, victims. Uh, by the way, this was actually gathered uh, through our inquiries via Facebook. Uh, although we know, we all know that we have a lot of um, um, comments no, uh, against Facebook. But um, during the pandemic, uh, uh, most of our inquiries uh, came through Facebook, uh, through our Facebook page. Uh, they were sending uh, private messages. No? And these are actually our, the breakdown no, in terms of age profile of those who actively seek for uh, help no? during the pandemic and their geographical locations also. And you will see that majority of them are actually students, no? although we're not saying that um, although even professionals and those who can afford um, services like uh, professionals or technical and associate professionals are also seeking for help. No? And then the variety also of, of sector. No? These are all women ad identifying themselves as either solo parent woman, lesbian, bisexual, trans women, pansexual, and other no? other sectors. And these are the various uh, kind of help sought no? in, w, uh, in WLB and some of the crimes committed. Um, so it's a range from discrimination, online sexual harassment, harassment, um, uh, abuse offline. So we try to differentiate the online sexual harassment and the abuse committed offline by no, by people known to them and harassment of our abuse committed by intimate partners. No, And uh, particularly for our presentation, I would like to highlight only, although, although this is our only eight cases of victim of online vouchy, but the age you will see our majority of them are uh, are young women or girls, no? And all of them are actually students, no? Um, so what happened to them? Um, you should, uh, basically, uh, their nude photos or videos were uploaded in various platforms. So photos uploaded in shared drives and traded online. Uh, selling of nudes in a website, I think this was already mentioned. Uh, one is on espia.net. The recent um, case that we tried to help was was uh, their videos of her girlfriend. I think their laptops were hacked. Uh, I think the laptop the laptop of the girlfriend was hacked, 
and eventually their sex video was uploaded to finiflix.com. So what we did, so the automatic response, as mentioned by our representative from NBI, is for the couple or for for the big team to um to take down, no? uh, to use the take down clause of the of the site or of the social platform. So with the with the pinaiflix.com, we actually write the web administrator to to um to take down those photos and uh, to take down those videos because there, those videos were uploaded without the consent of the couples and eventually they responded. You no, know, they took they took it down, but they did not respond to us. So that's the context, no? Um, they take down, they took down the videos, but no official response to our communication. And then one another form uh, that, and that's the reason why we wanted to speak is because we wanted to share that it's not just Facebook, Twitter, uh, where it also where it's happening. It's also happening in Telegram, because Telegram has this um feature where the message can be uh, uh, invisible or Mawawala po siya after so many minutes, no? And there are certain chat groups. These are the name of the chat groups where the where the circulation of nude photos is happening. So usually they would say, okay, PM me, PM trade, no? Uh, PM trade, ibig sabihin, PM mo ako, trade tayo. So if I have a nude photo of my girlfriend or whoever, uh, you just PM me and then I'll give it to you, no? Or sometimes sasabihin natin, for example, do you have a nude photo of this particular person? And then, usually may mga collections sila na sasabihin nila, okay, I have. And then mag magkakaroon na ng deal between these, these people, no? Uh, students groups chat where they send photos, videos, different women for pleasure, no? Ang tawag naman RB, may mga ganun. And then, yung Pinoy porn site na xbreed.net, who uh, may FB messenger na nangyayari na exchanges. So, hindi lahat posting po siya. Actually, mas matatalino na po sila ngayon. Madalas, mas nangyayari po siya sa mga uh, private messaging. So, meron ding FB messenger na nangyayari through Samot Sari naman. So, nude videos or nudes or videos either show the face or without the face. But those who knew the victim will know that it is her. So, minsan makikita niyo po, although hindi nakalagay yung quote, hindi maliwanag yung itsura, but because siguro may tattoo or may something uh, uh, distinct no, with the women, with the woman's body, they will be able to recognize that it was actually her. No, so uh, how were the videos nudes acquired? So spread by friends who had access to the phone or former partners. Our victim was curious about viral video. PM lang may gusto. So may mga iba nag inquire talaga. So direct message by a stranger to a perpetrator was to, yung mga ganon. And then phishing, hacking, and harassment of troll accounts. So you will see that in this particular eight cases, uh, hindi lang siya yung uh, nangyayari po through Facebook uh, page. No? Uh, marami pa pong uh, forma kung saan nangyayari po ito. Um, so um, so that's basically just a short sharing of what, ano, I'll just continue, uh, Madam Chair, if I may, uh, which which uh, I will focus mainly on some comments, no? On so, Ma'am, Madam Chair, we are thankful again that uh, your house, uh, your Senate Bill 1929, actually is a product of, of also of the consultation among women's organizations, and I think some of the provisions that we actually uh, submitted to your office was included in into the draft. Uh, one particular provision was on the role of private actors because I think what was initially um, written in the draft was uh, po namin impossible magawa. <laughs> impossible magawa in a sense na um, given the, our Data Privacy Act, it won't be it won't it won't be possible for for the private actors, particularly ISPs and telcos, to do that. So one major major recommendation what was what we did was to ins to insert rather a provision that encourage or rather that um, that ensure that ISPs have these reporting duties. And although I'm not sure if it was uh, clearly stated, although I saw that there are penalties in violation of Section 9 of, of Senate Bill 1929, I think it should be reiterated that 
um, ISPs or telcos failure to report any um, any uh, OSEC related or trafficking related because this is trafficking related is equivalent to a penalty or a crime, no? especially for intermediaries. I think that's something that we can actually uh, push no? for our ISPs of not being able to report even though they already know that there is a crime happening. Um, second, ma'am, I also agree uh, with... Before Alicia. you continue, Ms. Jelen, send I me. Yes? No, um, um, uh, th this may or may not be square on what's being said by the WLB. But uh, I had a bill also that uh, referred to the same thing, again, um, against uh, electronic violence. Since uh, the chairwoman is going at breakneck speed, we can barely keep up. Anyway, yung sa SBN 1923 po, uh, may dinagdag rin ako kasi dun eh, yung uh, sa fabrication of fake information or fake news tungkol sa kababaihan or her children through messaging or other forms of cyber electronic and multimedia technology. It doesn't occur in other bills, but following consultation with the NBI and uh, some of our NGOs, it appears that fake news about, uh, uh, um, about women and their children has become also quite uh, um, common on uh, the uh, social platforms. Thank you, Sen Aimi. Uh, we will uh, slow down and or adjust to whatever is, yes, agree, whatever is the proper pace. Uh, as for example, I uh, announced earlier that we will have another hearing of these anti-trafficking and uh, anti-OSAIC bills with specific focus on Facebook, Twitter, uh, and other online portals in order to do justice to the uh, issues brought to us, to our committee by the stakeholders, and to do justice to the um, the broad and the finer points that uh, we members of the committee perceive uh, in these bills and the issues brought to us uh, by the stakeholders. And I did mention uh, at the start of our hearing that the bills on electronic violence against will uh, against women will be touched upon in so far as they relate to the trafficking uh, and OSAIC bills in that the latter also emphasize electronic or interne internet based means of committing violations uh, of the anti trafficking in persons act so as with all our hearings of uh, any committee here in the Senate, these hearings uh, are open to be as uh, expansive or comprehensive uh, as needed, uh, as we colleagues see that they, they relate to one another. So thank you. Yes, and I mean. I, I wanted to raise another point because there were concerns raised by the DOJ as well as the other law enforcement officers. Because the Barangay Protection Order, because I've been uh, very involved with our women's desk in the BNP, and the request has been to extend it to another 15 days for the BPO and the temporary protection order that it can be extendable to another 30 or 60 days. Ngayon, uh, naririnig natin itong mga online uh, and electronic violence. Naisip ko, meron bang equivalent ng electronic protection order na we can actually ask the social networks to take down these sites or these uh, users who are clearly abusing many victims on their sites. Parang meron bang electronic version ng BPO or ng uh, TPO? Wala. Uh, pala isipan lang po. I really like that. that the chair really likes that pala isipan sa uh, Maybe Ms. Jelen, you would like, uh, perhaps uh, Women's Legal Bureau has uh, some insight on that possibility of the protection uh, order, which is usually in the Anti-Violence Against Women and Their Children Act. If we, um, if we could actually evolve an electronic version of it in these bills or in this bill. Uh, before I go to Ms. Beth uh, of DSWP. Uh, yes, Ms. Jelen. Uh, so just to answer um, uh, Senator Aimee's uh, question, I think that's that's one of we that's when we when you read a Republic Act 9262, that's the assumption, ma uh, Madam mm. Chair, that it also includes uh, taking down, no? But I think the problem actually is, as mentioned by the NBI, is with the processes. You sure. Uh, so I remember po, um, there is a one case which involves uh, intimate partner violence na happen which happened in Facebook. 
So, ano lang sila, simpleng, ano, nagtatrabaho yung babae po sa Jollibee. And then, the boyfriend actually relied on her during pandemic. And something happened between the two of them. And then, she he, she caught uh, her partner taking photo of her. Uh, tapos, tinanong niya bakit. Sabi niya, remembrance lang para sa kanilang dalaw. Eventually, nung nag-pandemic, wala nang pera. At mahilig mag-ML po. Mobile Legends. Yung uh, boyfriend. So, he, he used that particular photo to extort money from the girlfriend. So, we, we were able to try uh, to help no, the woman by actually looking, by writing Facebook. No? Uh, at that time, ang challenge kasi it's pandemic. It's supposedly there should be a PPO that should be issued and a request the 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 perpetrator pero may other may added value po kasi yung pandemic na hindi siya nakahingi ng tulong pero dapat it should include um, including the the take, taking down no of those ano baka yun yung isang aspeto ma'am na hindi po nako cover doon sa ano the taking down of photos or nude photos uh which uh, without the consent of course of the victim no uh, kasi again this we're talking of yun yung challenge po ng anti-violence kasi these are adults, no? Uh, adults, and then in the context siguro na intimate partner violence na children, ano naman yung context ng taking down din po? Baka I think that's something that has to also be the ones po. Tapos, and I'm uh, attorney uh, Angeline Medina of the DOJ Cybercrime would also like to share on your question before I okay, ask uh, Ms. Jelen to conclude. Yes, uh, attorney Medina. Hello, ma'am. Or if, yes, Ms. Uh, Attorney Medina. Yes, please proceed. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. Um, Good afternoon. Our request for presentation, ma'am, is regarding OSAIC. But we can look into but we can look into this issue, ma'am, so that we can share something about it during the TWG tomorrow. Yes, please do, Attorney Medina. Yes. Appreciate Thank you it. very much, Madam Chairwoman. Talagang malaking problema to. Kasi um, while there was some kind of a tech clash and Facebook and the social networks took down sites on their own, many, um, many uh, jurisdictions also opposed the... Uh, freedom and the liberty of uh, social networks to do it on their own. Epapano kung uh, repression na of freedom of uh, speech. So, medyo may balance rin yan. Kaya kailangan pag-isipan natin with you, uh, DOJ and the other lawyers who are here. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Sen Aimee. Ms. Jelen, would you like to conclude uh, so that, and then I will move on to DSW. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Jelen. Um, colleagues, there's some okay. video interfering. Okay. So that we can hear Ms. Jelen well. Yes, Ms. Jelen, please conclude. So now I think one particular aspect that we, need, we need to also look into the TWG are the community standards of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Because I think it's a problematic why uh, prosecution of cases is difficult because there are some particular uh, sections or articulations in the community standards which might prevent the Philippine jurisdiction of prosecuting such cases. The challenge is ang haba-haba po talaga nung kanilang uh, pinipero pang agreement po no, nung mga, mga um, uh, users or mga netizens. So I also agree with the earlier statement that we also need to balance, no, when we look at the role of the ISP providers or telcos, we also need to, to balance the right to freedom of expression of of our Filipino people for vis a -vis yung right to protection no kasi um, i think yun yung challenge po no if we give ISP ISP is the role of monitoring what would it, it actually means and that's the reason why we wanted to focus more on them reporting incidents or cases where they found that there are violations of the anti trafficking or any other sexual sexual violence related laws uh, yung isa pa ma'am na gusto ko pong i-highlight, sorry, uh, two minutes po, yung IACAT representation po. I know for the longest time that IACAT representation for CSO focus more on women, women representation, children, and um, migrants. But ang isa po sa mga consultation that we did recently, and Attorney James present, there were some civil societies actually saying geographical location should also be considered. Uh, given that uh, most of those representatives are coming from the Central Manila. And we have to recognize that there are distinct experiences of those coming from Visayas and Mindanao. So yun lang ma'am, gusto ko lang pong erase because that was the main concern of our national consultation led head 
uh, held in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao po. Uh, yung yung last po ma is uh, on on uh, Senate Bill 1929 is we support the repealing clause to um, uh, the repealing uh, the 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 draft uh, saying that we need to uh, repeal the 10175 particularly the cyber sex provision because of its over breadth and vagueness. I think what we have highlighted in SB. 1910-29 will actually address problems relating to syndicated cyber sexual violence, not cyber sex. I would like to highlight that, that there are sexual violations happen at the, and it's not cyber sex because when we say cyber sex, it's something consensual. And then, uh, ma'am, in relation to sex, uh, Senate Bill 2068, gusto ko lang ma'am i-highlight, baka kailangan po natin isama yung word na regardless of consent. Because um, although we're talking of children, but most of the perpetrators sometimes involved in OSAEC are the family members themselves. So I think isa yon sa kailangan po rin natin tignan because there's there's an element kasi of force and all and so on and so forth. At, at mahirap po natin patunayan yan kapag family po yung involved. So baka lang po magandang isama po yung regardless of consent. And then ma'am, last point ma'am, in relation to electronic, gusto ko lang po sana mag because I saw that there are a lot of um, bills which call it electronic, baka uh, based on our studies in WLB in 2010, we prefer to use it as ICT-related violence because electronic violence does not capture the essence of the problem. The violence is committed either in from, through sending of information, which is bad information, committed through communications or social media platforms and through technology-related violence. So baka it's better, ma'am, to call it ICT-related violence rather than electronic violence. Uh, uh, and lastly, ma'am, since yung, gener yung pong electronic violence, I amendment of RE-9262, medyo nag-worry lang po ako kasi um, yung 9262 includes intimate partner violence. So may power relations pong usapin. Yes. So baka lang po dahil medyo generic po yung LGBT, uh, hindi maliwanag if it was committed by intimate partners. So uh, I'm not sure if it's already been covered by Safe Spaces Act. So baka kailangan lang po i-review ma'am. Yun lang po and thank you very much po. Thank you very much also, Ms. Jelen. And I saw, and I may give a couple of thumbs up uh, to your in relation to your uh, last comments. So now uh, let's hear from uh, Democratic Socialist Women of the Philippines, Ms. Beth Angshoko. Nakamute ka, Beth. <laughs> there you go. Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you to uh, for, for sending us this invitation. Uh, first off, I'd like to say that uh, we have been involved in, in the consultations uh, among CSOs in the formulation of your SB 1929. And uh, we're more than happy to see the integration of, of some of these uh, recommendations that we had, particularly uh, in relation with uh, the way to address uh, trafficking, which should be gender responsive. Uh, I cannot uh, emphasize this enough because we know for a fact that most of the victims are, are women and girls. So, so this is quite important. Secondly, Madam Chair, we have, uh, we did a uh, uh, focus group discussion with uh, community women from various uh, places in, in Luzon. And one of the uh, results, one of the sharing that they had is that in their communities, and these are poor communities, marami pong nangyayari na online sexual uh, abuse talaga. And in many cases, because of lack of money, this has become an IGP for some of the families, an income generating for, uh, project for some of the families particularly during the time of uh, pandemic. And this uh, raises a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, concern. In your bill, Madam Chair, uh, it says here that uh, in terms of the role of the DILG, there's going to be community-based uh, awareness raising programs. And this is uh, very, very important. If you are going to uh, address the root, as uh, said by Plan International earlier, uh, if we're going to address the youth, uh, the roots of online abuse, no, and uh, I would want to uh, to say that the barangays are are quite important, and and therefore 
if if you could uh, if the bill could explicitly say uh, that the barangay should be involved because sila po yung unang pinupuntahan ng ng mga tao pagdating sa sa kahit na anong problema and and uh, their role is very important they should know what online uh, uh, abuse is so that they can act properly and also to say that families you know are are very important sometimes they do not understand that what they are what they are allowing to happen is already abuse and and this is very troubling and therefore when it comes to capacity and awareness raising programs at the community level uh the, the involvement of families the involvement of the barangay uh, uh are quite important secondly it mentions that uh, the DI, DILG will provide LGUs with model ordinance. Uh, but it does not say, Madam Chair, in the provision that there is uh, that the LGUs are being mandated to come up with ordinances, to pass ordinances, so that the implementation of the law can be localized. Perhaps this can be more explicit, that the, the, DIL, uh, the DILG will uh, help the uh, LGUs to come up with to pass uh, ordinances in relation with the issue. Uh, I am very concerned about uh, what was said earlier that uh, uh, we need to address the root causes of, of, of this problem. And uh, we cannot escape poverty, especially at this point. And therefore, uh, I call on also the role of the uh, DSWD in terms of strengthening its uh, its program uh, for support mechanisms for uh, poor uh, families in poor communities. And also, of course, misogyny is all over, and therefore uh, the, the awareness raising should uh, include uh, efforts to fight misogyny. Uh, in relation, Madam Chair, with amendments to 1962, are we allowed to, to uh, respond to specific questions, for instance, raised by Senator Aini. Yes, please, uh, you may. Um, and then if you yeah. could begin to wrap up as well, but please do yeah. address the questions. Yeah, thank you. Uh, in, in the bill of uh, Senator Dinai, that's Ivausi, SBN 111, there is a provision in terms of EPO, Electronic Protection Order. And it says there that, uh, you know, it's going to be issued separately or uh, together with the BPO and the PPO or the uh, permanent, uh, no, TPO. And, and we would like to support this, uh, uh, Madam Chair. Secondly, we also want to support the provisions of, of uh, uh, in terms of having additional paid leave, especially for women, poor women uh, who are in, in the communities, no? Uh, but it says here that up to 10 days, may, may, I, may you please recommend that instead of saying up to 10 days, we put a floor, a minimum in terms of the number of days, because one day is up to 10 days, two days is up to 10 days. And therefore, we would want to, uh, to be a bit more concrete in terms of the provision of the law, uh, of, of the bills. No? A general comment, Madam Chair, for all the uh, uh, amendments to 1962 is uh, we propose that the language should be more direct. Every time, uh, because in some bills, there is always uh, the mention of women and children. Uh, I think that's very uh, dangerous because it gives the impression that the abuse should be committed to both women and their children. Uh, so we would want to request that it should be or rather than uh, the use of or rather than and. And also, every time that there is uh, a provision that calls, uh, that, that speaks about uh, intent and malice, we would want to move for the deletion of such words because intent are ma and malice are very difficult to prove. And therefore, we go right to the effect of the action, uh, not mentioning intent and, and, and malice. Uh, these are all, Madam Chair, and I hope that it helps, no? uh, our comments help. Thank you very much. Certainly, and thank you very much also, Beth. So now let's hear from our resource persons in the private sector as well as uh, international organizations. Uh, could I call on the resource person from Smart Communications, Attorney Eileen 
Regio, uh, Head of the Regulatory and Strategic Affairs of PLDT Inc. Um, good afternoon, Madam Chair. I'm Eileen Regio from yes, uh, PLDT's Regulatory and Strategic Affairs, and thank you for the invitation. No, on behalf of our wireless arm also, Smart Communication, we would like to assure the committee as well as you, Madam Chair, no, that the, the PLDT group is one with the Senate in ensuring that the nefarious activities sought to be curbed and are prosecuted by the bills proposed to be discussed today and tomorrow in the TWG uh, are prevented and not altogether stopped. No. We take this also as an opportunity to thank you for these measures that uh, will inte that intends to protect uh, sectors of our society that in most that who are in most need of protection. Uh, just on the bill, Madam Chairs. Uh, that seeks to amend RA 9775 or the anti-child pornography law. Uh, I've been hearing mention of uh, telcos and ISPs a while ago. Please be informed, Madam Chair, that uh, the PLDT group has been actively participating in all uh, various fora as well as meetings or hearings uh, at the committee level of the House of Representatives, particularly on the Committee on Revision of Laws and the Committee on the Welfare of Children, where we have been uh, giving our inputs because it may be a proper to uh, for the body to realize that RA 9775 has been overtaken by a lot of changes in technology, such that ISPs are not the only uh, uh, entities that uh, will greatly help in the curbing of these nefarious activities. As was mentioned by a lot of the resource speakers a while ago, uh, online uh, service providers or content ho hosts are also very important in these activities. Um, we have been making known publicly that the PLDT group has already blocked more than 3,000 sites and contents that uh, contain uh, these materials or osaic materials online, uh, uh, sexual abuse and exploitation of children materials. Uh, in fact, we've also been putting in uh, additional CAPEX in order to upgrade and update uh, the systems and platforms because I heard mentioned uh, mentioned a while ago that we did not have any technologies. Uh, I beg to differ, Madam Chair. We do have, in fact, we have four ways at present by which we are able to uh, comply with the provisions of RA 9775 without, however, transgressing, again, as mentioned earlier, provisions of the Data Privacy Act, which uh, in the various hearings at the committee of uh, the various committees at the House level, well, uh, the National Privacy Commission has made known their uh, their uh, stand with respect to this. Uh, uh, the ISPs be if the ISPs can be allowed to look into the content that flows through the connectivity that we provide. If I may just uh, explain, Your Honor, that an ISP or a telco like us uh, do not have the right. In fact, we are prohibited under RA 9775, particular Section 9, into looking into what flows through our contents because once that opens up to uh, to one, it gets open to all, meaning all transactions that a, per, a particular subscriber uh, wants to uh, do via the internet, we can look into that. So it's a very, uh, very dangerous proposition that uh, the NPC has also made known their uh, their uh, stand on, and may ha may be also violative, no less than by the uh, by the uh, no less than uh, the constitutional provision against uh, right to privacy and even prior restraint or censorship, Your Honor. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we have spent, uh, as I mentioned, we have spent a considerable amount of capex in ensuring that we have our EDNS, that's our secured uh, domain name server system, as well as the child protection plat platform of the group, which are now the two main platforms that we are using in order to block all these uh, sites and contents. Uh, we also have a third means by which we report to, uh, uh, as mentioned uh, uh, several times, Facebook, Google, uh, uh, Twitter, Instagram, all these uh, social media sites. Whenever we come across a possible uh, content at their, hosted at their uh, site that may be violative of this law, 
the unfortunately, Your Honor, we cannot, as just mere ISP provider, uh, remove them. It's only the content or the host server that can content uh, that can uh, bring down this uh, content. So that's another way by which you do. That's a third means. We have another means, but this particular means, the fourth means by which we can help in the curbing of this nefarious activities, is through our data traffic analysis report. Our network is capable of detecting whether there is a sudden surge in the usage of traffic or internet bandwidth in a particular area, say in a very remote barangay where there used to be no internet, if not a very minor or very small uh, uh, amount of traffic uh, flows before, but suddenly there will be a surge, then we can again uh, uh, tap or uh, inform the law enforcement agencies of such a uh, possible surge and it could lead to an investigation of a possible uh, illegal activities, Madam Chair. Uh, again, we reiterate our commitment to the Senate as well as the committee uh, uh, to, to support all these initiatives, be it via blocking or by, via the provision of relevant information, as well as the, a, a while ago it was mentioned, the retention of information. We do retain, retain information uh, that uh, are being requested to be retained by law enforcement agencies if they are necessary in order for them to uh, conduct the investigation, Madam Chair. Uh, and thank you also because you also received a, an invitation for the TW tomorrow. We will definitely attend and will provide more detailed inputs on the various bills, Your Honor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much also, uh, Attorney Rejo, for the uh, already detailed and uh, concrete no, um, inputs you've made, including on how moving forward into the TWG tomorrow to close those gaps, for example, how to stop harm, but at the same time uh, not lose uh, resources for investigation and prosecution. So thank you. And now let's hear from uh, the Psychological Association of the Philippines, uh, Chair of BAPS LGBT, uh, Ms. Beatriz Torre. Or if Ms. Beatrice is not, uh, yes, my you're name here. Is All right, yes, Ms. Bea. Hello. Yes, please proceed. Um, apologies for my uh, um. Ah, komsek na putol yata si Ms. Bea. Ah. Uh, Is Bea paputol putol yung signal? Okay. Are you back, Ms. Bea? Okay. While we're waiting for uh, Psychological Association of the Philippines to come back on. Hello. Could I? Oh, yes. Okay. Are you there again? Oh. Yes. Hello, Ms. Bea. Okay, Komsek baka maka assist kayo kay Ms. Bea muna. Let's call first uh, the, the Coalition of Concerned Families of the Philippines, uh, Mr. Ariel Gomez. Um, or if not, yes, um, Mr. Uh, Gomez. Uh, um, Ma'am, uh, sorry talaga. Uh, kasi... Uh, we only got a uh, invitation yesterday evening, uh, kaya hindi kami naka prepare ng amin yung ano uh, position paper. Pero uh, we are preparing it. Isabit lang namin mam written. Uh, yes, please. Salamat po, uh, ma'am, uh, si madam senator. Salamat po, Mr. Gomez. Kung ano po na position paper na ko. Salamat. Po. Could we hear them now from oh, Miss Bea? Are you back online? Okay. Hello. Oh yes. Okay. Right. You're back. Yes. All right. Okay. Please proceed. Uh, yes, Senator. So, Miss Bea, so brang choppy yung signal nyo. Could you please just submit um the the association's position paper? 
and then participate in the technical working group tomorrow. Bea, hindi talaga kaya. Comsec, pakicommunicate na lang kay Ms. Bea to submit the association's position paper and to come to the TWG tomorrow. Share. Comsec, pakicommunicate na lang kay Ms. Bea. Parang hindi rin nila. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. So let's hear na. Ms. Bea, pasensya ha. The signal is so bad. Please just submit the association's position paper and come to the TWG tomorrow. All right. Okay na lang, Comsec. Let's hear now from uh, intercessors for the Philippines, Ms. Susan Hervasio. Or if not, Ms. Susan, Ms. Hazel Apino. All right, we can return to intercessors of the Philippines uh, later. Let's hear now from Kapunan and Castillo Law Office, Attorney Lorna Kapunan. Attorney Lorna, mute kayo. Good afternoon, Senator Risa. Thank you All for right. inviting Good me. And, uh, I'm glad you, you invited me in, in my capacity. Uh, I noted that the invitation was uh, directed to me in my law firm, so uh, which gives me the opportunity to speak as a legal practitioner because I have heard so many comments here, but uh, on the ground, we really have problems. And uh, let me put on my hat as a practicing lawyer. But l let me first state that uh, as practicing lawyers, all of these uh, women and child-related bills uh, has really given rise to a certain level of frustration in terms of the practitioners because uh, I think uh, the Senate realizes and the House that there are enough laws to protect women and children. It is in the enforcement side that we are quite lacking. And so I put on my hat as a practitioner from the Kapunan and Castillo <coughs> law offices. Uh, first of all, thank you to Senator Isa, of course, and uh, Senator Kikos, Kiko, Senator Pia, Senator Aimee, and Senator Spinai. And I do have some points, uh, very brief points to to share uh, with them in terms of their previous interventions. Uh, first, in terms of uh, legislation, although uh, many, many already have commented on specific items of legislation, as a practitioner, I'd like to offer practical suggestions. Number one is really uh, the laws. The laws uh, do not provide for a presumption of guilt. In the Constitution, we do have a presumption of innocence. And I think we should shift that presumption of innocence to a presumption of guilt when it comes to violation of trafficking laws, when it comes to uh, sex trafficking, or all laws relating to women and children, be they in... Be they in uh, online or offline sexual ex exploitation. And since cyberspace is now the new normal, uh, and uh, it is with brazenness that the perpetrators uh, are growing in numbers because of anonymity, I think uh, it, would be a, it would be a worthwhile suggestion to consider shifting uh, presumption of innocence to the presumption of guilt so that all of those that are apprehended, all of those perpetrators will now have to prove their innocence. Number two, uh, in terms of procedure is, uh, I think anything that has to do with uh, women and children, uh, violence, uh, abuse, exploitation, trafficking, should be considered an aggravating circumstance. In other words, uh, although I noted that the penalty in most of your proposed bills is 15 years, it should be it should be stated that this penalty uh, is one degree higher, and and that uh, offline and online exploitation of women and children should be considered a a an aggravating circumstance. Also, you may want to consider. Uh, reviving the definition of heinous crimes. I think uh, all of these that have been mentioned are so terrifying, even more terrifying than uh, what government perceives is the worst crime, which is the anti-terror law. 
I think uh, if there are really terrorists, it is these human traffickers because they're the ones that destroy human dignity uh, of uh, women and children and of human beings in general. So the suggestion is to consider it as a he heinous crime without uh, penal without uh, possibility of pardon. I think that would be a very useful deterrent for perpetrators. I also like the idea of, uh, or the comment of uh, Senator Kiko, where he says that this, this social media platform should be considered a crime, crime scenes, uh, because that is where it happens. Uh, cyberspace is so, is so, uh, so universal that we may have issues on criminal jurisdiction. We must note that the practitioners know this, that crimes are territorial. And so that if the crime is committed in the Philippines, it is obviously that they have to be in Philippine courts. But media and internet and social media is such that there really is no physical jurisdiction. It happens in cyberspace. And therefore, the issue of jurisdiction, I know most of the bills say it should be with either the family courts or the regional trial courts. I think, uh, I think regardless of whether the crime is jurisdictional, let's say, because uh, also the interventions have noted that it happens in, in uh, NCR, but no, it really happens in cyberspace. So how do you bring the foreign multinationals, the Googles of this world, the Googles, the Facebooks, the, uh, all of the other companies uh, mentioned by our senators, when they have multinational companies, Company. They are multinational companies, and it is very difficult to bring them to fore. Uh, from my experience, the only way that they will stop, look, and listen is if we, if the law provides, because you already are considering solidary liability, if the law provides that if it is a multinational company having a branch in the Philippines or in cyberspace, that the president the chief executive officer and the board of directors should be necessary parties in a criminal complaint so that there is no issue of jurisdiction. I mean, I noted that uh, Senator Aimi mentioned the U.S. case, uh, I think involving Google, where it was U.S. was sued in the U.S. But why can we not sue a U.S. Google company if their headquarters in the U.S. in the Philippines? And that would be made uh, possible if we amend uh, the, the draft legislation to provide for solidary liability of the chief operating officers and the board of directors of this multinational company. So that will solve the issue of jurisdiction. The other thing, uh, Madam Chair, is, uh, uh, and that is in the area of uh, legislation. I'd like to go to the area of execution because we are forgetting that laws are only as good as their execution. And here I would like to address the short, very shortly the five pillars of justice. You're talking about the five pillars of just criminal justice system, uh, talking about law enforcement, prosecution, the judiciary, the correctional system, and the community. Uh, in terms of law enforcement, uh, we have listened to the DOJ and the NBI. And as a practitioner, I will say that kulang na kulang talaga, Senator Risa, ang personnel. The, uh, the, judiciary, the judiciary has not appointed enough, uh, or the, the DOJ has not appointed enough prosecutors. The NBI has a very limited personnel plantilla for their cyber crime division or for their sexual harassment. Uh, so if we are to legislate, we must also look at the budgets of these uh, law enforcement agencies and the, and the gap in terms of uh, appointment of uh, prosecutors and personnel for law enforcement in terms of prosecution as well. Kulang na kulang po tayo ng sometimes uh, courts are clogged because prosecutors are absent, especially now. There's virtual hearings. They have to do, be in several platforms. So also, uh, maybe for in, maybe there should be a, uh, there should be really a whole of government approach 
prosecution, kulang na kulang ang fiscals natin. And of course, in the judiciary, we need that uh, we need to educate our justices, our judges, in in electronic media, in electronic media, and our lack of courts. Our courts are empty, and the reason our courts are empty is because our judges got get shot. Uh, we get killed in the practice of uh, of law. Secondly, and uh, fourth, the the fourth pillar of justice is the correction act. We should look at the. Uh, Sometimes, especially minor offenders, are viewed as criminals. No, uh, and they are mixed. They are mixed with adult offenders, because especially now in cyberspace, uh, the perpetrators are minors, and that and that is why we have our cyberbullying laws, which I hope will be amended, Senator Risa, to now expand itself to include adults, because the present cyberbullying law only applies to minors and applies to private uh, public and private uh, educational institutions and training centers it should include adults and cyberspace and lastly the community which is the last pillar of justice here is it's very important because uh, really the first go-to is the barangay and uh, in practice although we have RA 9262 which is the barangay protection order very few barangays really know what a barangay protection order is. And we add to that uh, under the law, of, under the draft legislation of Senator B9, the electronic protection order. So uh, we need we need to get our barangays involved. We need to, to get our communities at the commu proactive. Your neighbor, is there trafficking in your neighborhood? Uh, is there sexual abuse in your neighborhood? So there's there needs to be a community policing amongst families and amongst neighborhoods. Uh, in terms of the community also, uh, noted that uh, that we need more women's desks and we need more family shelters. We need more havens. Uh, so uh, that is on the enforcement side. Now, can I just give a, lastly, on a macro pers pers perspective, Laws are only as good Please do, as but by way of wrapping up, Attorney Lorna. Yes. Thank you. Well, laws are only good as the appropriations. Kung meron naman tayong batas, wala namang appropriation yung batas na yan, useless yung law na yan. So if the government, if legis Congress is able to do automatic appropriations uh, in their budget for debt servicing, uh, more than 20% of our national budget goes to servicing of national debt. Why can't we do the same? Why can't we have a national, uh, why can't we have an automatic appropriation in our uh, draft legislation for budgets for all of these uh, special laws on women and children so that it is not dependent on the uh, male chauvinist pigs in Congress and in the House. And lastly also, uh, we need, in terms of enforcement, we need to use our gender budget, the GAD budget also should be made mandatory for local government units to use this for projects. So uh, in the end, I'd like to say, number one, it is all a matter of political will. Our government, even without this legislation, even without these enforcement agencies, if we have a government and a leadership that has political will because we have enough in the constitution. There is police power. If the slow wheels of just if the wheels of justice are slow, government is empowered under the constitution, under the general welfare clause, and it's police power to arrest. Merong as anti-terror bill na surveillance chaka warrantless arrest. Go in natin to dito. Let us make that a blueprint for laws concerning women. Secondly, is the issue of corruption. The, the reason there, there are very few perpetrators in jail is there is a different scale for those who can afford lawyers. And therefore, I suggest that in your bill, uh, senators, you put there a mandatory requirement for the integrated bar of the Philippines to give pro bono work for victims, uh, for law schools, to require in their legal aid clinics to give pro bono work for victims, for the courts 
to give the official representation to victims of uh, women and children violence and trafficking laws. And lastly, of course, is as Beth, our dear friend Beth mentioned, it is the poverty issue. For as long as we are poor, for as long as mothers are hungry, for as long as children have no means, there will always be trafficking. So government should address this poverty issue. With that, uh, congratulations for this effort. Uh, hopefully, as a practitioner, I will get less frustrated, less impatient, and less disgusted at the slow wheels of justice. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat din, Attorney Lorna. Uh, I think we all share that uh, that hope. So now, um, well, the, the chair hopes to end uh, a little past 1 o'clock p.m. And uh, we'll be moving our technical working group from tomorrow to Thursday instead, please. Dahil uh, medyo voluminous yung ating mga inputs. And, and that can only help the final bill or bills. So I'd like to... Uh, 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 and by f first hearing from uh, UN Women Philippines, UNICEF Philippines, and GLOBE. So let's call first uh, the National Project Officer of UN Women Philippines, uh, Ms. Charisse Hordan. Thank you, Senator Risa. Thank you. Um, happy, before we end then, um, happy International Women's Month. Um, you especially, yes, we're celebrating it. And uh, you and women would like to thank all the senators uh, for their dedication and commitment uh, to really end all forms of violence, including gender-based um, violence, including that's committed online. I just want to be very brief. Um, I already uh, uh, inputted in the chat box uh, the recommendations from the set of UN Women. UN Women, in fact, um, prepared a guidance note um, uh, noting the urgency of the, uh, the surge of um, sexual violence online. So we have um, this guidance note on addressing uh, trafficking, particularly um, because uh, the EU adopted uh, trafficking in human beings, but it's also, as we refer to, trafficking in persons. But um, briefly, uh, we have a four-point recommendation. One, of course, we hope that um, uh, the final consolidated bill would adopt uh, a human rights, gender, and age-sensitive, trauma-informed, and victim-centered victim approach during and after the pandemic. And um, we are very much interested and keen to have um, governance of coordination as a express process in the um, final bill as well, um, highlighting and mentioning specifically the intersectoral and interagency mechanisms such as IACAD, IACVAUC, because of course um, we are looking at it uh, broadly as a gender-based violence and, and um, sexual-based violence um, against women and children. And of course, the Inter-Agency Inter Council and um, Cyber uh, Child Pornography. And um, as mentioned earlier, we are keen to see how um, the, these interagency bodies are operationalized um, from both international, national to regional including the barangay, the operation, operationalization and activation of the local uh, IACVAW uh, and IACAT um, uh, coordination mechanisms. And um, again, we also highlight the need to expand and institutionalize civil society participation and the periodic uh, monitoring that will be publicly uh, available or that would be participated as well by both civil society and private sector alike. And just to note, um, Madam Senator and Madam Chair, that it's also provided in the UN Women Guidance Note. Um, we're taking note of the high risk, uh, at risk groups, which are the marginalized communities, including the indigenous peoples, including migrants with irregular status, because we're looking at our migrants who are also in countries of destination or, or who are left undetected or uh, unprotected by um, foreign laws in their um, countries of destination. So that's uh, very short and we will, uh, of course, send our um, intervention. Um, and we will be very happy also to be invited to the TWG if we haven't uh, been invited yet. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Madam Senator Issa. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Jerry's. I'm sure you and women has been invited. So please just note that we have to reschedule it to Thursday. Salamat po. Please, colleagues, there's at least one person who has his uh, audio unmuted. Pakimute lang po. So let's hear now from the Child Protection Officer of UNICEF Philippines, Attorney Maria Michelle Munoz-Gueson. 
So, uh, Attorney Maria Michelle, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. With good your afternoon. permission. Uh, uh, happy Women's Day. Uh, happy Women's Month. Month. <laughs> and with your permission, uh, may I please share my screen? Yes, please, Comsec. Paki enable mag share. Okay. Um, in the interest of time, I will skip uh, some of the uh, presentations here because they pertain to the national situation, which uh, was already discussed by the previous speakers. So let me just proceed with the highlights of our child online protection researches. I hope you can see my screen well. Um, yes, we can, though it's a bit small. Uh... Attorney Maria Michelle. How's this spot? Better pop. Please proceed. Okay. Um. A minute. Okay. Um. UNICEF conducted two. Um, uh, studies on child online protection, namely national study on online sexual abuse uh, of uh, children and Philippine kids online. So let me go first with the Philippine kids online, which is actually um, a study that uh, uh, that looks into the behavior of children when they nav when, when they navigate the cyberspace, as well as um, the opportunities and risk. Uh, that are incorporated in this uh, in the cyber in the cyber cyberspace. So, um, Marie Michelle, your audio is a bit soft. Baka pwede yung lakasan ng konte. Then please proceed. Uh, okay. okay. So uh, again, uh, your honor, I am I speaking better now? Um, the National Philippine Kids Online Survey is a multi-country initiative uh, which seeks to understand the behavior opportunities, risks, and practices of children when they navigate the internet. Although uh, this uh, does not uh, entirely discuss online sexual exploitation and abuse of children, but it captures the behavior of children that puts them at risk to online sexual abuse and exploitation of children. Let me go straight to the findings. 90% um, of Filipino children say that they can access the internet whenever they want to or need to, and 59% of them can actually connect to the internet without any supervision. And for 45% uh, of them use smartphones, mobile phones, while 34% still use the desktop. Majority of them, or 50%, more than 50% of them rely on paid internet, cafe serv service, or PisaNet shops, while others rely on free Wi-Fi in schools, coffee shops, and malls. Um, the average time spent per day online by children uh, is almost two hours, but this was conducted pre-COVID, so definitely it has increased by virtue of the uh, blended learning continuity program of the Department of Education, as well as their increased usage and exposure to the internet because of mobility restrictions. Um, so as headline results, nearly half of children said that the internet is not safe for them. This is a bit double-edged because if you look at it, only 48% of children uh, we could um, deduce this as only 48% of them really know that there is danger when navigating the internet. And majority of them, more than half, 52%, it could be that they know how to protect themselves. That's why they think that internet is safe. Or uh, what is more dangerous is that um, they are not aware of the dangers on the internet. And um, about one in 10 children reported to have been bullied online. Two in 10 children are vulnerable victims of online sexual abuse and exploitation, or about 18%. And um, these uh, respondents or these children said that 17% um, of them, uh, family members are involved, but we cannot uh, say that it's only 17%. It could be more because 20% of them refuse to say anything about this. So uh, in these cases, 70% uh, you used 
mobile phones, smartphones, or tablets in perpetrating this crime. So let's proceed to the national online study, which uh, actually uh, provides us a deep understanding of, uh, of OSAEC through four pillars, namely uh, the victim, the perpetrator, the private sector, and the case management resolution. Let me just proceed with the highlight. For the child victim, in this case, um, they said that they are more traumatized during the rescue than the actual abuse itself. Why? Because of separation from family. Kasi po sa bahay po yan normally in the extract or sine save. And it is supposed to be a space, a safe space for them. And there is also this grooming where they have this attachment to the facilitator or to the perpetrator. And... Uh, and or a sense of shame. Other uh, challenges here is the reliance on uh, testimony of children where uh, they are made to recount their stories, then uh, there is re-traumatization. Re and there are other victims who only feel, uh, who only get a sense that they were victimized during aftercare. Uh, for the perpetrators, in this case, they are the facilitators or the producers of the child sexual abuse materials. Economic gain is what primarily drives them. And what is important is that they don't feel remorse over their engaging children for online sexual abuse and exploitation. For this case, uh, social norms play an important part. So, um, Niniisip po nila, wala silang masamang ginagawa dahil film lang ang bata. That there is no touch. That is a myth. That is not uh, true. And um, they even feel, some of them even feel that they are the victims because the uh, law enforcement uh, actually uh, confiscates their gadget. So there's that mindset po, which is really wrong. And then for the technology naman, uh, for the private sectors... Attorney Marie Michelle, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we're approaching one o'clock. If you wouldn't mind, could you go to your recommendations before I call our last speakers? And then please do submit the complete study to the committee. Um, uh, we'll do po, Your Honor. Thank you, Attorney. So... Um, uh, let's just proceed with the recommendation. Actually, for the uh, national study and the uh, Philippine Kids Online Survey, uh, we've seen gaps, and uh, there we we've seen gaps on the implementation of the law. That's why we've conducted a policy paper together with Ateneo Human Rights Center and PLCBT. And uh, let me just go through the findings and recommendations. There are eight penal laws and five ancillary, ancillary, ancillary laws on this uh, issue, but let me go to the gaps. For the Anti-Child Pornography Act, I think um, I would just like to echo some of the challenges mentioned earlier. So uh, it does not cover live streaming um, because it was uh, implement, uh, implemented and enacted prior to the establishment of social media companies. And uh, we would like to recommend uh, to stop the use of the term child pornography and instead use child sexual abuse materials or child sexual exploitative materials because um, it does not insinuate consent, the CSAM, or CSEM, and it is more respectful, and it does not trivialize uh, the issue. And um, uh, this law does not also contemplate a self-generated OSAIC materials. And there's a challenge. Um, I think we've had a long discussion on this earlier on the role of ISPs, internet content hosts, and social media companies, as well as banking and financial institutions. So for, uh, uh, as mentioned earlier, with regard to Facebook, um, they mentioned that they are not included in this uh, law because uh, they are called online intermediary hosting service because they do not really upload content, but it's their users who upload content. But um, during this study, they also mentioned that they are willing to be held accountable um, and uh, anti-photo and video voyeurism act. It, it, the main problem here is the la uh, is consent is an element of a crime, and it does not really distinguish when the victim is a child. So when it's a child, consent it should be immaterial. Um, then other 
penal laws they do not contemplate online manner and they do not uh, some some uh, some penal laws do not punish accomplices and accessories and they do not provide the obligation really of related entities in preventing detecting and prosecuting crimes and for banking laws they do not allow garnishment of foreign deposit accounts and for the data privacy acts i think um, it, it's also the challenge uh, that was mentioned earlier by the private sector on uh, the liability of uh, having to disclose uh, sensitive uh, the details of uh, of the data that they are holding and um, further this does not impose higher obligations or higher standard of responsibilities and higher penalties for entities who handle children or personal sensitive information um, I think um, on case management, I would just like to emphasize that uh, there should really be a harmonized case management system. Uh, our current protocol only uh, is only on case management of abuse, neglect, and exploited children, but does not factor in online sexual abuse and exploitation. And uh, it is uh, imperative to strengthen uh, the community level responses, as mentioned by Attorney Kapunan earlier, that uh, community plays a major role in this um, issue and as well as in all other legal issues, and strengthening aftercare and reintegration of child victims. And we would like to really recommend the utility of uh, community-based healing and recovery and foster care and kinship rather than institutionalizing, which is um, not really uh, ideal because sometimes victims feel that they are uh, being punished or incarcerated. And um, centralized database, uh, is also ideal to to also uh, to avoid duplication of efforts and to properly monitor uh, the cases of online sexual abuse and exploitation as well as referral pathways should we should really have this in order for the public or the reporters to know how when and where to report and as mentioned earlier personnel and equipment as well as invest increased investment on this uh, issue is pertinent are pertinent and um, it is also important to have that data sharing between related entities and law enforcement agencies as mentioned earlier I think there are gaps in sharing of data um, and um, I think uh, uh, we've also had discussions or uh, roundtable discussions with foreign law enforcement we'll just share the details with the group uh, and with the body on their uh, thank you voluntary uh, on their legal frameworks that they utilize and um, uh, the uh, on the awareness raising continuous education inclusion of uh, education education uh, child online safety in the curriculum is also pertinent and our call is to review and amend a existing legal framework on a SAEC, improve all stakeholders involve all stakeholders and exercise over, oversight on the implementation of existing laws and members of the private sector to really take an active part, a proactive part in this initiative. Uh, that would be all. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. And with your permission, Paul, we would like to submit a written position on this one. Thank you, Paul. Please do, and thanks a lot to attorney. So now let's hear from... Uh, Attorney Ariel Bayan of Globe. Attorney Tobayan. Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chairperson. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, uh, members of the committee, as well as uh, fellow resource persons. Considering uh, the time left for me to speak, I'll just be brief and state that uh, we support the initiative of this committee to revise and review laws uh, pertaining to electronic violence against women or children as well as on the proliferation of mosaic materials in the internet. Uh, GLOBE welcomes the opportunity to be part of the technical working group that was rescheduled for Thursday uh, to, uh, for the discussion of proposed amendments to RA uh, 9262, RA 9775, as, as well as RA 9268. We especially welcome a Senate bill uh, 2068, as uh, with respect to the amendment of Section 9 of RA 9775, because uh, somehow it reflects the reality of the ground 
it reflects the um, changing nature of internet content and changing nature of how to combat the uh, internet content, and as well as to differentiate the actors in this ecosystem, that we have uh, various actors and that we have various responsibilities as well. And we welcome also that uh, the statement that uh, this is a whole of society approach that must be done, and it should be done cross-border, uh, cooperation as well with foreign uh, law enforcement agencies in Northern Germany. Um, we, of course, will be welcoming the inputs and insights from the various studies made on the subject matter, like that made by the International Justice Mission, where uh, there, the findings are that most of the perpetrators are the relatives themselves of these children who are victimized. And um, uh, I think we need to constrict really the production of this this uh, content, restrict it, and also restrict, uh, eliminate or reduce the consumption of this content. A whole society approach is needed because practically anyone who holds a, a smartphone or digital phone, if I should say, is a potential publisher, potential content provider that loads of, uh, any content in the internet. And we have that. And uh, uh, a particular challenge is uh, live streaming that should be addressed uh, by the law. Uh, so far, uh, with the chairperson, we do our part not only offline but also uh, online. In the offline space, we cooperate with the uh, UNICEF as well as the Deaf Ed to educate school children, whereby our uh, a program, a campaign named the Digital program is now included in the Deaf Ed curriculum, uh, which educates children on how to navigate the internet safe, safely. But uh, on hindsight, Madam Chairman, considering these studies, I think this uh, needs to be expanded uh, to out of, of school children as well as the communities where these uh, online or site materials are produced. So instead of using the internet for such uh, uh, nefarious activities, we, we, we will try to educate them on how to properly use the, these tools to improve their lives and their lifestyles, Madam Chairman. On the online space, we have blocked uh, so far about the 2,500 sites of mosaic materials, and we could continue to work with various sectors, like the Department of Justice and BICT, which have recommended some um, technology on how we can proactively uh, do our part with respect to the blocking of this uh, in content, uh, Madam Chairman. So, uh, well, Madam Chairman, and uh, we hope to participate in the TWG of Thursday. Thank you very much. I certainly hope uh, Globe will, Attorney Tubayan, and thank you very much also. So last, last, but not the least for today, um, could I call on uh, Attorney Medina of the uh, DOJ uh, Office of Cybercrime uh, to make uh, your presentation? That's Attorney Angirin Medina. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. Yes. Uh, permit Good afternoon. me to share my screen. Yes, please. Come sec, paki enable lang. Um, ma'am, before I start with this presentation, let me first um clarify or um uh, clarify some of the points that were. Um, thrown to us earlier by some of the resource speakers, like, for example, the statement by the NBI regarding that the yung inability po ng ating law enforcement authorities na makuha yung mga ebidensya whenever service providers would already take down a certain page or certain account. So, um, first po, when we are talking about computer data or electronic evidence na hawak-hawak ng ating mga service providers, they are under our law 
um, required to retain this for six months, yung computer data, depending on what type of computer data. So meron po tayong subscriber information, traffic data, at content data. Under our cybercrime prevention law, ang subscriber information at traffic data, kailangan nilang i-retain for six months. But as to content data, they only have the obligation to retain that computer data if there is a request for preservation. So, minsan po, kapag um, hindi na, na walang request for preservation, kasi madali nang natitake down yan eh, pagka, pagka tinake down ng perpetrator, kasi alam na niyang nahuli na siya, minsan kapag magsis, hindi, pag hindi nalaman beforehand ng law enforcement authority, mahihirapan na tayong magpa-preserve sa service providers. And our question is, meron bang violation ng law na hindi nila na-preserve or wala silang mabigay? So as to content data, yung laman po ng kanilang mga post, yung kanilang um, pinag-usapan sa Facebook Messenger or at other social media platform, hindi natin masabi na meron silang violation because under the law, wala nga silang, um, wala silang um, obligation to preserve that type of computer data. But of course, as to subscriber information and traffic data, kung hindi nila na-preserve, they have a uh, violation. So there is a specific case po that uh, has been handled by the NBI ATRAD na huli na nung nalaman na take down na yung, na take down na yung, yung page before before na tayo makapag-preserve with, with Facebook. So medyo nahirapan, medyo tedious because um, kailangan pa natin mag-request talaga, not based on, on the law, but talagang request natin to Facebook na kung pwede, meron pa bang available computer data regarding this. Um, nakapagbigay din naman sila ng information, computer data that would help NDI Atrad to further the investigation. But as I said, even we, if hindi natin to maa-address in our law, um, baka for the next time, kung hindi tayo i-accommodate ng Facebook, we don't really have a legal basis in asking them for um, in asking them to um, disclose the the content data. Um, ang sumunod po and now um, let me tackle naman po yung sinabi ng ating law enforcement authorities na there is a lack of cooperation on the side of internet service providers as to yung pagbibigay naman ng computer data or evidence in relation to an investigation of OSAE. Mula po kanina, we can hear, we heard the internet service providers that they have been very, um, that they have been helping us in, um, they have been helping us in the investigation or in the prevention of, of OSAE. But we should differentiate po the two kinds of, of the duties of internet service providers. That is sa prevention, that is blocking and filtering yung mga contents, yung OSAIC contents, and of course, their help in the investigation naman of OSAIC cases. Currently, they have been, um, we, we acknowledge the effort of internet service providers in the prevention or pag take down ng mga website na merong contents, OSAIC contents. But as the NBI Atrad said earlier, iba Meron, meron pang kailangan i-improve as to their efforts in guiding law enforcement, helping law enforcement, um, law enforcement authorities in the investigation of OSAIC cases. Ang concrete example po nito is that we got um, a report from Facebook. Sinabi nila, sinabihan nila tayo na, oh, itong Facebook account na to is a violator of, of OSAIC. And they gave us the IP address of that account. So ang next step po kasi na gagawin ng ating law enforcement authorities would be based on that IP address, hahanapin nila sinong gumagamit ng IP address na to. At makukuha nila yon lalapit sila sa ating internet service providers and ask them, internet service providers, please give us your customer who used this IP address at this certain period of time para ma-pinpoint namin kung sino ang nag-send or sinong, nag, um, sinong, sinong perpetrator to. Bakit kailangan na na hindi ba pwede na based on the on the Facebook account eh malaman na natin kung sino kadalasan po hindi because a cyber criminal wouldn't really use yung kanyang totoong pangalan in doing something sa social media so we need other in 
other um, evidence para ma-pinpoint sino ka ba talaga kasi hindi mo naman i-disclose yung yung pangalan mo. Ang isa na gagamitin ng law enforcement authorities would be the IP address. So lalapit tayo ngayon sa internet service providers. The as the NBI Atrad has said, sabi nila, um, they request internet service providers to disclose to them the subscriber information of the subscriber sana no gamamit ng IP address. However, the response of internet service providers is that because of technological limitation and there are thousands of persons who are using a single IP address at a certain time, hindi nila ma-disclose, hindi nila tayo matulungan. And one of the ang isa sa kanilang um, sinasabi na makakasold nito would be our migration from IPv4 to IPv6. So it is the stand of the Office of Cybercrime that even if maganda, even if we have laws that would really address the current situation, pero kung hindi natin ma-address yung migration from IPv4 to IP, IPv6 o ma-hurdle yung technological limitations, it would still preempt a lot of cybercrime, not only OSAIC investigations, but other cybercrime and cyber-related cases that are being handled by our law enforcement authorities. So ma'am, uh, medyo maha napahaba lang doon, but uh, let me um, proceed to the NICMIC report. This would be a short, this presentation was also delivered before the House sa kanilang deliberations on OSAIC bills. So, um, the DOJ Office of Cybercrime is the point of contact of the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children in the Philippines. The number of NICMIC cyber tip line reports, yung naririnig nyo po mula kanina na 1.2 million na na-receive natin, um, these are NICMIC cyber tip line reports. So this statistics is usually quoted and being highlighted whenever we mention the alarming increase of OSAIC in the Philippines. So I think it is imperative for, at, for our policymakers and legislators to really know and have an informed and com common understanding what is the nature of these cyber tip line reports. And as earlier said by the UNICEF, mas masyado tayong nakabank on the cyber tip line reports to really have to, in having a, um, an idea of the OSAIC landscape in the Philippines. But so let's, 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 it's imperative for us to know, ano ba talaga to? So, um, Okay, so, so the NICMIC, as you already know, we are the point of contact of the NICMIC. The NICMIC is a non-profit organization in the U.S. that is authorized by the U.S. law to receive reports of possible child sexual abuse and exploitation materials from electronic communication service providers. Sino ba tong mga ESPs na to? These are Facebook, Twitter, Google, Yahoo, among others. Um, and dito na po yung mga social media platforms and other service providers that, that, that are used for communication. So yung questions earlier, whether si Facebook ba nagre-report ng whenever nagagamit yung system niya kapag nagkakaroon ng transfer or distribution ng, um, ng OSAIC materials, the answer is yes. But they report to NICMIC. They do not report to law enforcement authorities here in the Philippines. But the next question is, nagkakaroon ba tayo ng copy ng mga Facebook reports na ito? Um, yes, we are having copies of these Facebook reports, and these reports are being received by the DOJ Office of Cybercrime as point of contact. So we are notified whenever si NICMIC nakakakuha siya ng reports from service providers at based on the IP address na kikita niya na, ah, okay, itong communication na to um, mapipinpoint sa isang IP address na allocated sa Philippines. So the one point... 1,297,000 reports ng cyber tip line reports na natanggap ng Office of Cybercrime for 2020, um, it means that either the sender or the receiver of the OSAIC materials is here in the Philippines based on its IP address. So yung sinabi po kanina ng, ng Google and that of IJM, they said that only 73 reports after based on that one point. 297 um, million um, cyber tip line reports are priority reports. So this is this is true po. Uh, um, 
in your screen, you would see the, the increase of cyber tip line reports in the Philippines. So 2019, we received around 426,000 reports 2019. Come um, 2020, and this is the, during the COVID pandemic, our office received 1,297,000, approximately 1,297,000 um, cyber tip line reports. And as I said earlier, these are reports na sinasubmit ng mga ESPs whenever nakikita nila na merong distribution ng USAIC materials. So these reports are evaluated, but after evaluation, sinikmik, ang, nasi, ang nakita lang niya would be um, there are 73 cyber tip line reports out of that 1.3 million reports that are priorities. Anong ibig sabihin ng priorities? It indicates current or imminent risk to children. There, there is indicated possible risk to an individ, individual in the near future. So, yung, yung types ng ganong report, may imminent, imminent risk sa bata, only 73 cases. So, our next question is, yung, yung, yung 1 million reports, tungkol saan yun? Um, later, makikita nyo po yung, based on our evaluation, ano ba kadalasan ang, ang laman ng mga cyber tip line reports. And as IJM earlier said, hindi lahat ng cyber tip line reports na ito are um, amounts to an exploitation, but more so, but it's more about the proliferation of OSAIC um, materials. So whenever our office receives the cyber tip line reports, Yung priority reports, yung may imminent risk sa mga bata, we, we do initial investigation and then refer it to law enforcement authorities para sila yung mag-imbestiga. Because under our laws, it is the PNP and the NBI who are the law enforcement authorities who would investigate this type of crimes. Kapag may traveling sex offender naman po na involved, our, what our office would do is communicate with the Bureau of um, Immigration to have that foreigner blacklisted para hindi na sila makapasok dito sa Philippines. And because kadamihan ng mga cyber tip line reports na priority would involve a conversation between a foreigner and that of a children that would say na punta ako dyan sa Philippines, mag-meet tayo and let's do this, let's do that. So to, to prevent this, what we do would be ipa-blacklist na sa Bureau of Immigration. And of course, we also... Um, we also coordinate with, with the DSWD. So, ano ba kadalasan ang laman ng NICMIC cyber tip line reports? Um, Attorney Angeline, I apologize for interrupting, but perhaps you could uh, present uh, a last slide on the major recommendations uh, of this study, but submit the complete report to the committee. Thank you, Attorney. Yes, ma'am. That is noted, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. So these are the to to recap. Let me just read the challenges and of course the recommendations. So the challenges would be COVID nineteen, of course, because different investigation afterwards. The unavailability of electronic evidence that would that would prove um, the existence of of. OSEC, kasi nga hindi natin hawak, hawak ng mga service providers na nasa ibang bansa. Incapacity of internet service providers to disclose subscriber information and cooperative victims because they, would, they wouldn't they would really want to press charges against facilitators and the advancement of technology that makes it difficult for law enforcement authorities to detect OSEC. So our ways forward implementation is for uh, ways forward, our recommendation number one is the implementation of Internet Protocol version 6. And I think this is can be more elaborated by our internet service providers. This, um, this recommendation is not only important in the investigation and prosecution of OSEC cases, but um, it is important in all investigations and prosecutions of cybercrime and cyber-related cases or any traditional crime facilitated using the internet. And next, partnership with the private sector for automatic blocking of URLs and, and which have contents classified as CSAM, which is already, we have an ongoing talks with internet service providers. And continuous conduct of capacity building activities 
for criminal justice players and adoption of awareness campaigns. And lastly, um, one of the, yung sinasabi po ng NBI Atrad, bakit tayo nahihirapan na kumuha ng ebidensya from Facebook and other service providers that are that are abroad? It is because, ang sinasabi nila, ang sinusundan nilang law whenever they disclose computer data is our law here in the Philippines. Um, under our law here in the Philippines, before sila magbibigay ng computer data, kailangan ng warrant. I-compare yan sa, so kahit na subscriber information lang yung kukunin natin, which is a non, uh, really not so intrusive data, kailangan pa natin kumuha ng warrant dito at iserve sa kanila, which is very different with that in the U.S. Sa U.S., by mere request by law enforcement authority, they would disclose subscriber information. So to address also yung concern ng ating law enforcement authorities na nahihirapan kami kumuha ng information kay Facebook kahit ang kukunin lang namin subscriber information, we forward the recommendation that we make it clear in our OSAIC laws that even by mere requests by law enforcement of, by proper law enforcement authorities to service providers it disclose na nila yung less intrusive computer data like um, subscriber information but of course for more intrusive computer data like the content of communication kailangan pa rin ng warrant so that protected then yung ating citizens at yung kanilang um, constitutional rights would still be safeguarded um we the DOJ OOC the DOJ already drafted a uh, uh, a draft of provision regarding this um, that by mere request ng, ng law enforcement authorities makapag-disclose ng, ng, um, ng subscriber information para matulungan ang ating um, only limited to sa cases po ah, because of, syempre it's a different interest i-compare sa isa, ibang, ibang cases. So as an exemption, mere request kapag USAIC, saan yung mabigay na yung information? And this is not Nobel because... Um, this is not all well because in the US, by mere request naman talaga, binibigay nila ang subscriber information. So that's all for, for the Office of Cybercrime. We would submit our position paper and kasama po sa consolidated position paper with the DOJ legal staff. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Angerine. And thank you very much sa lahat po ng ating uh, resource persons. There's still one from the women's organizations and two from the private sector who were not able to present today, but please submit your uh, report to the committee uh, so that uh, we can continue to consider those sa TWG sa Webes at yung susunod nating hearing. Just by way of a, a brief uh, closing remark, uh, ganito po talaga, no, mga kasama, kalaganap, ang usapin ng trafficking. Um, I have some photos here that I'd like to share with you, which were provided by my informants. Women are being trafficked, not through brick and mortar dens, but on online platforms. I'm really galled to learn from one of our hearings before that a child as young as two was the victim of online sexual exploitation. I look forward, really look forward, to moving these bills forward and creating more meaningful protections for women and children. Nagpapasalamat po ako sa aking mga colleagues, kina Senator Aimee, who's been here from beginning till the end, Senators Pia, Kiko, Cynthia, and Sherwin for their interest and passion. There is need, obviously, there is need to amend our trafficking laws. There is need to protect children and women from online sexual exploitation. We will call another hearing and make sure that online and social media platforms are present. Again, dear friends, the technical working group will be on Thursday to thresh out um, all other issues. So for today, marami pong salamat sa inyong lahat. Uh, ingat po and stay healthy. Uh, this hearing of the Committee on Women, Children, Family Relations, and Gender Equality is suspended. Salamat. Thank you, Senator.